The Gun Shop Show, the Gun Shop Show, what is it? We don't know. The Gun Shop Show, the Gun Shop Show, here we go, it's the Gun Shop Show. Welcome to the Gun Shop Show. I'm your host today, Logan Jones, and you're may, you're probably wondering why? Why is Logan why? hosting this show? I'll tell you why. Eli decided to he he went you know, mom on us. Go he bit, went just, mom. Just do one of those things. Mm-hmm. So he, he won't be. Well, he is joining us today, but in a little different form. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, voice <laughs> broke there. Hey man, I remember my teen years. All right. I'm still waiting for puberty. It's mm-hmm. supposed to hit right any moment. Now. Any moment. Any yeah, moment. It'll now. get here. It'll mm-hmm. get here. Anyway, um, I the voices you're hearing or that voice you're hearing is mm-hmm. our Sultry producer tones. that makes everything possible. That's Trevor Smith. Hello, everybody. There he is, that handsome mm-hmm. face. And Eli is joining us um, uh, in a little different attire than normal. Yeah. Hey, Eli, how are you feeling? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Are you, uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then also, he's not, yeah, he's not you really shouldn't being... forget about our host. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, there he is. Yep. Oh, yeah. Looking handsome. Oh, I'm so my handsome. Gosh. Thank you for that. <laughs> anyway, we have a great show for you today. We're going to talk about some guns. We're going to mm-hmm. talk about some not so good stuff. We're talking HR 8, yeah, the bipartisan yeah, no. background checks. The uh, House bill. went ahead and passed that The House this decided week. to go ahead and pass that. So we're going to mm-hmm. talk about that. We're going to have... I'm Paul, moving out of the House, by the way. Right. We're going to mm-hmm. need to. We're going to have out of the Paul house. Glasgow from Legally Armed America on to talk about that. Yeah, and he's a great... Spend uh, some time with him. He does a, a, does a great job of... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he's a passionate person about these sorts of topics, so he's going to fill you in on a lot absolutely, of those details. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. We're also going to give away something we've never given away before. What's that? What are we giving away, man? Are we going to show you thinking people? thinking gun? I'm, I would always think gun. Not, you know? not gun. Okay. Not gun. Gun-esque, okay. maybe? Oh, yeah. Maybe? Dude, I was thinking the same thing, man. Are you? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Gun-esque. Okay. Let's show the people. Drum roll. Drum roll, please. <laughs> a crossbow. Not a just a crossbow. It, it is... It is the crossbow mm-hmm. that the crossbow Eli shot in the store at a chair, the wall, mm-hmm. mannequin, mm-hmm. a bunch mm-hmm. of other stuff. It got kind of got crazy there now, a little bit, but it is mm-hmm. the crossbow. Mm-hmm. Here it is mm-hmm. in my hands, made mm-hmm. by Firefield. It's a mm-hmm. handheld crossbow, a little pistol Yeah, it shoots crossbow. bows. It shoots mm-hmm. bows, not shoots, the kind of bows that go on it presents. It shoots pistol bows. Mm-hmm. Yep. But Lots also, bows. Uh, we should mm-hmm. let folks know that that is not the one from The Walking Dead show. You might have thought it no, was, no, 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 no. but uh, no. no, this is more like a just as effective. Not yeah. the same one. I mean, I don't know how many uh, zombies you're going to mm-hmm. take out. With. Oh, I don't know why I did that, folks. Let's not look at that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know how many zombies you're going to take out with that. but maybe. One at a time. That's how many you're going to no, take out. A couple of them. And uh, Trevor, how, yeah. how can you enter in for a chance to win this crossbow? Oh, well, it's, it's easy, Logan. Let me tell you how. Okay, go you're going to want to go ahead and join yeah. us on the Facebook. Okay, okay. you're going to want to okay. go to the Facebooks. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to want to type in the letters... Uh, that make up the word Liberty Tree Guns. Okay. okay. You're going to want to go and type that in. When you type that in, you're going to okay. see a live video playing. You're going to click on that thing. Yep. Go into the comments. I know this sounds like a lot of work, but it's really like two steps. Right. All right. So you go into the comments. You start typing in mm-hmm. your friends' names. You're like, James uh, Bobs. You know, type his name. Sure. And, uh, and if your Facebook will be guns. like... Oh, you mean James Bob's? And then uh-huh. I'll fill it in. Yep. And then you click the little share button and put it on your page, mm-hmm. and that helps us grow our audience. So that yeah, and you don't even need to leave the feed. You can click share. Yeah, just share simple. right there you, as, as you're watching the show. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. super simple. Make sure you mm-hmm. tag five friends, get entered in for a chance to win this crossbow. Mm-hmm. Here, we're also going to announce the winner of oh, last yeah, week's we giveaway. Are. Which this was one's a good one too. This the most one. expensive gun we've given away Absolutely. so far. We're looking at this Ruger yeah, and the nice, American and that 270 one, Winchester. Yeah, that one's uh, the one that keeps on. 
on giving because that that can bring home din din. Mm-hmm. Okay, you mm-hmm. can bring home din. This would make that. a fantastic, fantastic hunting rifle. Mm-hmm. It's chambered in two seventy Winchester, which is a fantastic cartridge. It's been it's been a around for a long time. Oh, Very it's effective. Been around. It's been around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it has. Do you know what we also like doing on this show? I don't know, man. This we like first giving time. away free stuff. We do like that. We do like that. We like that a lot. And we yeah. have we should koozie. Uh, we got the koozies. Koozie. That's right. Look at that. Lime nice. green. CZ. CZ. Liberty Tree. Which it looks they really just blasted. bought Colt, by the way, too. CZ did buy Colt. Yeah, we're going to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, or they at least they agreed to buy Colt. So yeah. we have this. It well, looks really they. blown out, but it's a really a nice yeah, color. Yeah, it's a and super lime green. As it's getting warmer, you're going to want to keep your drink cold. Mm, I mean, might as well pick one of these up. It sounds like the it's right thing free, to do. It's free on our website. We also yeah. got decals oh, here. Yeah. Kind of show. I keep hiding my face. I don't know why. I don't know why either. Anyway, you can kind of represent with these stickers here. These and that has a vinyl decals. Yeah. And that has a much deeper meaning than it might seem. It's mm-hmm. not just a logo, folks. This is a state of it's mind. It's more than that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Absolutely. let's uh we've got some other stuff on our website, but let's uh let's go ahead and show folks how we can get that great yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's simple. You just go to libertytreeguns.com. Yep. And then you're gonna want to go ahead and find that Liberty Tree merch mm-hmm. link. Click that little baby. And then uh, once that page loads, you're gonna find all that great free merch all there. That goodies. And not just that. We're going to one-up them. We're shipping it. Oh, we don't want to show that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, we don't want to do any of that. That's an accident. Anyway, that's weird. Weird. Yeah, that's so strange. Anyway, so uh, everything there is free. So- all the free, sorry, all the freebie stuff. The um, the koozie, mm-hmm. the CZ Liberty Tree Gun koozie free, mm-hmm. decal free, shipped to you free shipped as well. Shipped to you free, yep. Uh, just the decal, everything else. Now we're charge also a little for shipping. Giving away some of our own merch. We have a Liberty Tree camo hat. Mm-hmm. It's a nice camo. It has a nice and that's lime the party green. version, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Nice lime green Liberty Tree logo yeah. there. Then we have like a. a Subdued denim mm, American that's, flag. That's for the ladies. The ladies love this hat. Ladies I also, I actually hat. find this hat really attractive. I know you I do. Like it. I know. But you if do. you're one one of these and you're you're low, you're not local. Mm. You can't pick it up. We'll ship it to you. We're just gonna yeah, charge you a couple two, bucks. Two, three, I mean, four whatever bucks. it takes to get it first class to you. It's no big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, a couple of things. Uh, yeah. I think we I think we let folks know about all that stuff. But uh, what we're gonna be talking about today with Paul Glasgow HR eight, I believe. But also yep. we're gonna go out and we're gonna shoot the. Uh, barkeep, the heritage mm-hmm. barkeep. Uh, we're, we're not going to shoot. We shouldn't tell the folks what we're going to shoot just yet. We should, oh, we should oh. first start with that was a little tantalizer. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. We should first start by telling people that we're going to shoot our guns. Oh yeah, that's a good every call, gun. Man. That's that, why you're the host. Yeah, every, <laughs> every gun that is shown that we're going to shoot today. Either Trevor or I own. Uh, mm-hmm. We have them all behind me here. So you yeah. get a little, if, you, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching, mm-hmm. you can see those guns. We're going to shoot those guns today. We're going to talk about them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have Paul Glasgow on. I, yeah. I mentioned that. Yeah, a few, it's been a America. few times now. Yeah. yeah but yeah, hey, yeah. so we're going to shoot our own guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to shoot each other's own guns. We're going to, yep. Yeah. So these are we're our right. own personal firearms that we decided that we wanted to shoot and, yep. and kind of give people a uh, backstory of why mm-hmm. we chose them and also, uh, uh, you know, how we feel about them. Just impressions. Yeah. Kind of like a really mm-hmm. short review of what we like, what we yeah. don't like. Um, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty, pretty much, much the show, you know, yeah. I mean, we're going to talk about show. other stuff too, but uh, yeah. uh, that's pretty much the primary thing mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's some other stuff that we'll want to talk about too. Uh, we're yeah, oh, we're going to announce the winner. We already talked about that, didn't we? Yeah, we're gonna, so yeah, the f- whole yeah. first segment will be just us talking about things that we're probably going to talk about later in the show. <laughs> if you haven't probably picked up. Yeah. So that that bill that was introduced in the house mm-hmm. and passed. That's a big deal, and it could really affect Very a lot deal. of people, especially when deal. it comes to people want to, wanting to transact uh, privately mm-hmm. or private firearm sales. It's looking to just effectively end get that. rid of that completely, or yeah. what is known as the gun show loophole. Yeah, I, there's kind of a I funny... I almost said gun shop show yeah, loophole. Yeah, it's uh, probably going to be tripping over that a uh, little yeah. bit. It's so good. But, it's, uh, it's the same thing. Funny bit mm-hmm. in, uh, if anybody watches It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, there's a couple of uh, episodes called mm-hmm. uh, uh, t- Guns Too Hot to Something. I can't remember. But anyway, they went to a gun show and were trying to buy one from this guy. And uh, they yeah. were basing it off of a gun shop. They're like, uh, here's $1,500. Like, it'll be four grand. You know, and they're like, they're like four grand. It's fifteen hundred at Gunther's. Yeah. He's like, this ain't Gunther's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so this yeah this this show this show could not would not be possible without our amazing sponsor U.S. Law Shield, and because we miss Eli so much, 
we kind of want to hear from him. So we're going to uh, throw to Eli talking about uh, U.S. Law Shield and how wonderful of a uh, service. Service, yeah, thank you. Service mm-hmm. it is. I want to remind you that the show is brought to you by U.S. Law Shield. Uh, been great partners to deal with. We miss you. And the, the obvious benefits of having complete uh, legal protection for your self-protection uh, is apparent. You know, it's less than Netflix and mm-hmm. gives you full uh, access to an attorney who will defend you. No caps, no minimums if you're involved in a self-defense situation. So if you carry a gun, uh, the solution is obvious. But the thing that exceeded my expectations is the amount of educational work that they do. If you'll go to uslawshield.com, click the education tab, there's a ton of workshops, uh, seminars, they have books, um, they have a quick guide which you'll get when you become a member of Winner, you can and can't carry your gun. So uh, there's a lot of resources that they provide to the general public, but you get free access to a wealth of education so that you know whether or not you're following the law when you travel into certain areas and uh, how to comply with the use of force. It's very important that you have protection, legal defense for your self-defense. You can get it by going to uslawshield.com. Make sure you click join now and use the promo code Liberty Tree, all one word for 14 months for the price of 12. Thanks, Eli. I really appreciate that. Stay with us. Up next is Paul Glasgow. This is The Gun Shop Show. Hey, podcast listeners and live stream viewers. I wanted to let you know that the Gun Shop Show is made possible by our friends at MidAmerica RV. Being in the customer service industry, I have a really high standard for how customers are treated. MidAmerica RV does it right. I've got my RV through their dealership and I've taken it all over the country. Uh, We made it to South Padre Island. We've gone to Colorado several times. And if you've ever owned an RV, you know there's a lot that comes with it. So who you get it from matters and it's extremely important that you have support after the sale Uh, they're located just outside of Carthage they have a really vast inventory and they are home of I believe they call it a forever warranty so I urge you if you're in the market for one to check them out Uh, it's a really fun and can be very affordable way to get your trips in so visit them at midamericarv.com we appreciate their support of the gun shop show if you're in the market for a travel trailer or fifth wheel check out midamerica rv member is involved in a brief road rage incident. One driver cuts off another in traffic and harsh words and gestures soon follow. After the pleasantries are exchanged, our driver goes on his way assuming the incident is over. However, still agitated, the other driver calls 911 and reports our member as aggressive, possibly having seen a weapon in his hand. In reality, what he saw was our member flipping him the bird. In an incident that can only be described as an overreaction by officers, our member is pulled over. When officers learn that he carries a legal concealed firearm, they arrest him despite a lack of evidence. This incident is just one of numerous member experiences. Be aware when traveling with a firearm. Any aggressive actions made by you, right or wrong, can land you in jail. Don't let it happen to you. This just in, huge cave found beneath the heart of the city. Spelunka shared tales of an underground cavern system in Carthage, Missouri. Locals report the entrance to be at 10th and Garrison. Cave Gang Pizza. Stop in and enjoy wings, wood fire pizza made with local ingredients and our full bar. Bring the whole gang and uncover a legend. Our evenings are often on weekends are spending Friday and Saturday nights on the deck with our friends. Before everybody would be crowded, we could barely sit together. We were walking on top of each other if everybody was on the deck. Now there's plenty of room for everyone to roam around and relax comfortably and have plenty of space. Specifically, I know that every post 
They bury to a certain depth with full concrete. They use six by six posts, strapping and hurricane strapping on everything. It's how I feel a deck should be built if it's gonna be built right. This is Russell. Welcome back to the Gun Shop Show. We have some exciting stuff to talk about, some important stuff to talk about. We're joined today by Paul Glasgow. He is the host of Legally Armed America. Paul, how are you doing? Good, Logan. How about you? I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. How's the weather over there? Because we're getting some rain, lots of rain. Absolutely great. So you you don't want me to describe the weather in too much detail. <laughs> we'll just drop Fair the enough. show and head your way. Right, right. Now, there you go. Brothers. Anyway, right. so we're, we we want to talk about this HR eight bill, otherwise known as the Bipartisan Background Checks Act of two thousand nineteen. Kind of lay that out for our audience, what it means, and you, give us your thoughts on it. Well, it, it's essentially outlawing private gun sales. Um, you know, we the left has always had their, uh, uh, I guess, their creative titles for what this type of bill actually is. I could go through all of them. It's the uh, gun show loophole it's mm -hmm. eliminating the gun show loophole it's uh mm -hmm. you know i've even heard it uh what is it the um proliferation of firearms act at one point because supposedly we're all trafficking firearms if we're yeah. not doing a background check but essentially it, it means that every single in fact the very first line of the bill says to require a background check for every firearm sale uh, there are exemptions and of course you know the mm -hmm. exemptions are typically going to work in the government's favor right as right, no yeah. new laws ever apply to them but mm -hmm. uh, they'll I all apply it, to us if i remember correctly it was uh if you were basically a government uh, uh, employee uh, military police etc that you didn't have to jump through the extra hurdles there's several exemptions one mm -hmm. of the uh I guess subparagraphs is law enforcement agencies, law enforcement mm -hmm. officers, uh, private security, and armed forces. Um, what it applies to, but you know, it's not going to apply to government people either. Uh, right. If, right. if Nancy Pelosi goes to buy a gun, she's not going to be required to <laughs> do a background check if she's doing a private transfer. Right. 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 Well, uh, the title says bipartisan. Mm -hmm. uh, how bipartisan are we talking about here? Uh, at last count, I don't have the actual sponsors or the yays or the nays with me, but uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be pretty much down uh, party line. Uh, but there will be some Republicans. I mean, this is already passed. I just haven't yeah. looked at it yet. Yeah, uh, I'm sure there's Republicans in there. You guys mm -hmm. may already but know the answer to, to that. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it can pass the House regardless. The Senate is where we're really going to right. pay more attention to parties because obviously mm -hmm. they can't pass it without mm -hmm. either a Republican going over or a couple of, and I just put a really small, I'm talking about a no production video out yeah. a couple of hours ago, asking people to reach out to Joe Manchin, because if Joe Manchin on the Democratic side in the Senate mm -hmm. uh, does not go along with this, we have a really good shot of it not making it to Joe Biden's desk. Right, and uh, as of right now, I believe it's a 50-50 split with the VP being the tiebreaker, right? So yeah. I've seen Correct. Manchin's name a lot in the news uh, with regard especially to stopping any of the Democratic agenda that they're trying to, to push through. I'm assuming that he's probably in a district that's uh, a little more Republican heavy. <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, the guy actually is representing a pretty red district. Um, yeah. So, I mean, he kind of has to go along. I'll put it to you this way. I have way more confidence in the Senate in Joe Manchin voting the way we want him to than Marco Rubio. That's how much confidence I have in Manchin gotcha. and how little I have in a person like Marco Rubio. Right, right. Well, I mean, <clears throat> even after that, it's still got to, um, I mean, it's got to go back to the House and then it's got to be signed by the president. But that at that point, if it actually makes it that far, we're talking Supreme Court uh, cases and et cetera at that point, because I can't imagine that everybody's going to yeah. go into the into the dark on this. But, you know, and, and to your point, a lot of people kind of misunderstand that when when we're describing truly unconstitutional bills, I think a lot of people have the misconception that oh, at some point, if the president approves this or signs it in the law, that mm -hmm. the Supreme Court steps in. No, somebody has no. to be wronged first. You oh, know, right. somebody actually oh. has to be, this bill has to be used against them. They have to be taken to court. They have to be charged with something. Then they right. sue. And that can make its way to the Supreme Court if the lower courts don't knock it down. So it doesn't immediately leave the president's desk and go there. We right, may, right. We may yeah, have to right. fight this thing for a year when right. it's actually mm -hmm. enacted before mm -hmm. somebody is, quote, wronged. 
uh, and violated by this and there's there's a constitutional rights are violated, then they file suit and it makes its way there. So it can gotcha. be a long road. A lot of people. What bothers me about that and the reason why I wanted to uh, make a point of that is so many people out there have confidence in the Supreme Court, which I think they should. We have mm -hmm. pretty good shot in the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. but it's got to get there. Yeah, it's not automatic, you know, and yeah, that's a right. big deal to get something. That's a, they they refuse to see cases all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been refusing mm -hmm. Second Amendment cases for a very long time. They won't see any. And you guys know what happens there. If the Supreme Court refuses to see a case, then it falls back to whatever the lo lower court ruled. And right. unfortunately, those lower courts are typically pretty liberal. Yeah. So early, earlier in the segment, you mentioned the a gun shop loophole gun shop show loophole or gun, gun shop <laughs> not show. the gun shop show <laughs> gun show loophole my bad yeah. my get bad right the gun shop yeah. loophole uh can this you explain that gun shop loophole that we're in right now exactly exactly can you explain to our audience what exactly that is and what uh, that entails well what they've always tried to say is that um at a gun shop uh, excuse me now you got me saying it. at a gun show <laughs> that, that you can't uh or, or that anybody can sell a gun to anybody and they mm -hmm. give the uh, the misconception that even an FFL dealer that might be in that gun show, that somehow or another that there's this crazy loophole mm -hmm. that all of a sudden their firearms license does not apply and they can sell whatever they want without any repercussions, without using any kind of a 4473 or a background check, simply because they're at this mysterious gun show. That's never been the case. It's just the fact that we see more private gun sales at gun shows because people show up there knowing people are there looking for guns. So if I've got yep. a gun that I'm trying to sell, you guys have seen it. They sling a rifle over their shoulder with a pencil with a piece of paper tied to it coming out of the barrel that says, you know, asking 450 <laughs> or whatever. You know what yeah, I mean? Or they nice. name what type of firearm it is. That's what people are trying to use. And again, it's the whole misconception and the way people have always deceived other people by saying, oh, well, I didn't know that that, you know, you didn't need to do a background check at a, at a gun show. Mm -hmm. That's that's been a, a huge lie all these years that they've mm -hmm. they've gotten a lot of Americans to believe that there truly is this weird little mythical bubble that goes over a gun right. show. And no one especially has to if FFLs can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if you're not part of the gun community, you hear this, that there's a loophole to buy a gun without a background check. And you're like, of course, let's get that fixed. But you really have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, it, it sounds you know, like you, common sense. You hit a great point, And I've always had this problem with so much of, uh, I guess, the the way things optics, the way things look mm. so many times, you know, we hear it all the time on, on, like this. They used to pitch uh, a bill like H.R. 8. By saying, and I know you guys have heard this a million times, the majority of Americans support background checks. Well, of course we do. Mm -hmm. We have background checks. We, when you ask me that question and then turn around and say that, well, Paul's in favor of H.R. 8 because he supports background checks. Well, that's yeah. not what you asked me. Right. You mm -hmm. know, so that they do all this and they get tricky with their wording and they, they they misrepresent the answers and the questions that they've actually asked us. And that's how we get these numbers. You know how many times you've heard that 90, I think the, the, the phrase I always hear, 90% of NRA members support universal background checks. Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't ask that question like that. If you got into detail and said, all right, Billy, not, you're one of the 90 percent that supports background checks or universal background checks. Let me ask you, are you against you giving a gun to your son when he gets old enough to inherit that gun? He's going to look at you. Go, are you kidding me? I'm not I don't support that. Oh, OK, well, we're not going to include that in here. But they just got him to agree to say he was in favor of universal background checks until you drill it down and tell that person what he's actually ag agreeing to. So unfortunately, we've been typical po political fashion we've been lying to voters all this time because unfortunately a lot of them are stupid and i hate to say that but i mean a lot of voters are very gullible they're more concerned with who's coming in second place on american idol tomorrow, tomorrow night at the end of a segment this is the gun shop show okay. hey everyone the gun shop show is brought to you by Carthage lock and key. If you need anything to do with a lock or a key to success, did they tell you to say that? No, I, I just thought it sounded good. They have a mobile service, so they can come to you and cut pretty much any kind of key to success. Or if you lock your keys in your to car. Success. I'm talking even security modern chip keys. To success! Trevor, could you just, just jingle the name of the uh, business? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it good this time. So, with all of my properties and all of the needs I have, I trust... Carthage Lock and Key to success! The Ruger Security 9 LTO, an exclusive new firearm only from Liberty Tree Guns. This is an affordable pistol that comes with Ruger's renowned reliability and worksmanship and comes with an optic with a three year warranty. If you haven't ever shot a pistol with an optic on it, it's a lot of fun and you can really acquire a target quickly. All right, Ruger Security 9 LTO unboxing. So it pretty much obviously comes with everything the Ruger Security 9 would already come with. And this is how they look in the box. Ruger started doing this insert in the box, which is kind of nice. Um, we've had to modify it a little bit to make sure that your optic fits. So there's a cutout so the cover can go on and then the gun can fit right here in that. Um, they come with two mags, so a lot of price point guns, you're just getting one mag, but you get two 15 round whoops, um, OEM mags. A couple little bonuses is the optic comes with the AR mounts. So if you want to pull this optic off and run it on an AR, you've got everything that you need. That's a freebie, just comes in the box. Once we pull this insert out, Here's where all the goodies that come with the optic. Got a three year warranty on the Firefield optic, the user manual. It has the, the uh, tools for both mounting the optic if you want to take it off and also the adjustment screwdriver for the windage and elevation and then all of the factory information for your pistol. So um, this is the format that those will come in. And again, guys, remember this is an option if you are excited to try out an optic on a pistol uh, and you want to do it for a price point so these at this price are cheaper than some uh, guys are paying for just an optic you're getting the gun and the optic you can get the price and all the details at libertytreeguns.com just search lto Hey everybody, Eli here, and I'm really excited to tell you that the Gun Shop Show is brought to you by one of my favorite places on earth. Located here in my hometown of Carthage on the beautiful historic square, the Emporium on the Square, and the Woodshed. It's a art gallery, an event center, a gift shop, they have art classes, and there's very unique Americana artwork from famous artists like Andy Thomas. They handle a lot of his original framing. Just has this incredible old school vibe, and you can feel the history coming through have to check out the art gallery but then as you work your way to the back my favorite part the woodshed had a lot of great meals in here they've got burgers i love their catfish excellent chicken and waffles even it's incredible and it's also a music venue so we got to see my favorite band of all time the ben miller band ceiling was literally raining down they were rocking so hard but the best thing owned by one of my favorite people on earth that's Cherry Babcock. Check out the Emporium on the Square and the Woodshed. Hey there, we got your lab results back. It looks like you have a fever and the only prescription is more Gun Shop Show. Welcome back to the Gun Shop Show. We're talking with Paul Glasgow from Legally Armed America today about HR8. It's the bill that will prevent you from private sales of your firearms. Paul, pick up where you, you last left off in the last segment. 
I think I was just kind of wrapping up a point where the uh, politicians have gotten good at it. Unfortunately, the wrong mm-hmm. side of the political party have gotten really good at their deceitful asking of questions and misrepresenting of the answers that some people will actually give to them. Um, I, I actually want to point something out in H.R. 8 that I think um, a lot of people probably gloss over. We're talking briefly a minute ago about exemptions. Mm-hmm. One of the exemptions, if you look at H.R. 8 under D, subsection D, Um, It is a basically a quasi red flag gun law. It says one of the exemptions is a temporary transfer that's necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm, including harm to self, family, household members or others. If the possession by the uh, transferee lasts only as long as immediately necessary to prevent the imminent death or great bodily harm, including the harm of domestic violence, dating, partner violence, sexual assault, stalking and domestic abuse. What that means is somebody can take your guns from you without your permission if they think there's imminent death, we talk about red flag gun laws all mm-hmm, the time going mm-hmm. through the court system and taking somebody's guns without their permission. This leapfrogs all of that and allows somebody to say, I thought Paul was going to kill himself. I went and took all of his guns from him. Mm-hmm. That's not a good thing. guy. That means no. your neighbor no. now can suddenly mm-hmm. become the guy that determines that <laughs> you're not yeah. fit to have guns mm-hmm. anymore. And he's saving your life by taking your guns from you. Right. And it, and it says temporary. But what does temporary mean? Does that mean a year? Does that mean three years? So they can hold your guns for as long as they deem fit until you're safe to return those firearms to you, which I, I think is a is a big misstep. I think that they're trying to find a way around uh, red flag laws. That sounds more approachable to the the common consumer. Yeah, using a lot of trigger words in there that are gonna you know really tug at people's heartstrings, mm-hmm. like uh, hurt yep. people are gonna get killed. People are you know trying to put use scare tactics to get people to be on board with these sort of things rather than dealing with the facts that you know the majority of gun violence that happens is minimal in consideration to just probably violence in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, and, and you this, know, sorry, go ahead, Paul. A quick point on that, if I might. Um, A lot of us, especially here recently, because we're getting, you know, we went through four years where we didn't do a whole lot of videos on gun bills. Because quite quite frankly, gun bills were not being introduced. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting hit with a barrage of them. So a lot of us influencers and guys like us that create content are putting a lot of videos out. I get a lot of feedback and a lot of pushback that we're fear mongering. And sometimes we will try to read because I used to work in contracts. So I kind of. I'm used to reading this garbage and knowing that Mm -hmm. if they don't, if they're not specific, there's a reason why they haven't been specific. They're leaving it open in for a reason. This is a perfect example as to if I were to put a video out saying exactly what we just talked about, if you were going to try to commit suicide, somebody could take your guns. Sheila Jackson Lee actually tried to add an amendment to this bill today that says exactly what I just said. Let me find hers real quick. Jackson Lee. Um, her amendment to the bill, or proposed amendment to the bill, says makes clear that a gun owner who realizes that he or she is at risk of suicide may transfer the gun to someone else if the risk is imminent without a background check to prevent self-harm. Now, it's saying that they can transfer, but we all know what that means. The transfer mm-hmm. is a two-way thing. Somebody can receive the gun also. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she's right, making right. it a point to say that this is going to apply to people like that. Tell me that's not going to be misused and abused. Definitely will. And I, I mean, I don't need I don't need as an American, I don't need anything as a person uh, myself. I don't need the government to be taking care of me. Mm-hmm. I don't need you to come in and take my guns away Thank because you. I may or may not have be, cause harm to myself. I mean, not that I want to, but if I did, guess what? That's my choice and not the choice of other people who live around me. And bills like this, all they're trying to do, who are they protecting people from themselves? Right. You know, I mean, somebody's yeah. going to go to the police and say, I think Trevor is going to harm himself. You should go take his guns. Well, police don't care what beef I may have with my neighbor. They're just going to come take my yeah. guns. And now I have to spend time in the court system paying lawyers out of my pocket to defend myself. This right. isn't good business, folks. Uh, I mean, no, I'm and, sure and if the yeah, go ahead. I was going to say if the if the the premise that they put these bills out on is that somehow or another we are going to keep that. I love this phrase, keep the guns out of criminals hands. I love Mm -hmm. that. Well, I made a a comment in one of my videos and it was kind of an on the fly analogy that I made is that most of us operate inside this bubble. This is the Mm -hmm. legal firearm law abiding gun owner bubble. 
Criminals mm-hmm. are on the outside. Yeah, we right. don't sell to the outside. If I know or suspect or think or you got a shady look to you or whatever, I'm not selling to you. I don't care right. if you got a gun show, a buddy, my neighbor or whatever. Mm-hmm. We don't breach right. that just for the sale of a gun. Are you kidding right. me? Right. Most of us have consciences. We don't want that gun going somewhere where it might do some harm. Absolutely. Exactly. We're not the ones selling to those criminals. They sell to each other. That's mm-hmm. right. And who ends up getting uh, uh, treated unfairly? I mean, the laws affect the legal people more than they affect the folks who are doing illegal yep. activity. They don't care. You know, I mean, criminals don't get together and like, what kind of moral stuff <laughs> can we do today that's good? You know, all, yeah. all they care about yep. is non-moral stuff, things that are going to you know cause harm to people. So we're going to create more law. I mean, murder is already illegal. Why do we need more yep. things to try to make things more illegal? It's not going to stop them. All you're going to do is keep people oh, and that, from being able to protect themselves. And that's a great point because we've we've often looked at this and people want to get defensive and say, well, you want criminals to have guns. No, I don't want criminals to yeah. have guns. No, that's not what I'm proposing at all. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to keep you from making me a criminal because I'm making a private sale. Mm-hmm. These criminals out there, oh, well, how do criminals get their guns? They freaking steal them. That's right. I've had them steal them from me. That's how they get the damn gun. Mm-hmm. They're not going to forty four to a gun store, to mm-hmm. you guys' gun store, and filling out forty four seventy three with the full intent right. of leaving there and going, <laughs> throw it in the trunk and selling it on the street. That's right, not how they right. get guns out there. Right. And all bills like this do are take it away from, you know, young mothers who are trying to protect their Mm -hmm. children from people who are enabled to defend of of defending themselves. They are the ones that are going to get affected by this. And it's unfortunate. I mean, I'm sure that there are plenty of Democratic uh, congressmen and senators out there that feel like they're doing the right thing. But they're 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 engaging in this through ignorance, not through knowledge. And it's going to have adverse effects. Mm -hmm. And I'm a firm believer I don't think you disenfranchise a hundred million people, and this is going to sound cold blooded, but I don't think you disenfranchise a hundred million people to save one life because you can cost a thousand by trying to Mm -hmm. save that one. So Mm -hmm. are we taking tabs now? We keeping score on which side is killing who so we can say, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Your law killed more people than mine. I, I, I'm actually the winner here. Right. It doesn't work like that. You, you no. don't. Life goes on. People right. find ways around laws. Yeah, and the number of self defense cases or cases in which a firearm was used to prevent harm from someone ranges from anywhere from five hundred thousand to one point five million a year. Now that's a big number, but that's a lot of lives saved just from brandishing a gun, not even firing, just from brandishing a gun and taking that away from people. It's never going to do any good. Nope. It just makes people no, and, and ducks. It, mm-hmm. That's right. And in that very statistic, I would say, and I don't know the numbers, or it might be in your numbers, but I would say mm-hmm. a good 80 to 90% of those times, no one was hurt. Mm-hmm. Nobody got hurt. In other words, it wasn't me shooting somebody to defend myself. Many times right. I didn't have to pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, no one got hurt. And I saved, I prevented a crime and I pre- obviously prevented me from getting hurt, you know? It's just ridiculous that th- this HR eight. Um, it's this is a nasty bill, and it's only three pages long, which is pretty incredible. That that's yeah. that's all that, that it is. My is, guess yeah. is the Senate may add some amendments, and it has to go back to the House later on. I can't imagine it passing like this. But uh, well, this is an incredible bill, and it's going to cause some problems. Oh, yeah. Well, unfortunately, uh, reality is is that, I mean, when it comes to making deals, you ask for way more than you get, and you end up settling for less. So, I mean, if there's any silver lining, hopefully, if this thing boils down, it'll be much smaller than it is. But I don't like the silver lining in it. Paul, we have about a minute left mm-hmm. uh, in this segment. Is there anything you want to tell folks of where they can find you? Yeah, actually, I want to point to, I want to do a shameless plug real quick. If you guys yeah, don't no mind, problem, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, we have launched our own brand of hot sauce. It's oh. called Butthurt Brand Hot Sauce. My and, man, um, you know, my obviously heart. there's some, I love hot sauce. there's some tongue in cheek <laughs> stuff in there, obviously. But the right. cool thing is we are supporting um, autism. Uh, my son has special needs awesome. and we're Excellent. going to make all proceeds are going to go to autism organizations and gun rights organizations with this push for bills in the month of March. All of our sales from Butthurt Brand in the month of March are going to Gun Owners of America. That's our charity, if you will, okay. uh, for the month of Great. March. So you are Great. supporting a cause. This goes straight through to those guys. Excellent. And if you could share some links with us, we'll put that in the show notes. Mm-hmm. It's just butthurtbrand.com. You go there Excellent. and you can buy what you awesome. need. Awesome. Well, Paul, thank you so much for joining us. Really and uh, we look forward it. to seeing you next time. Thanks, gentlemen. I appreciate you guys. You too. Take care, man. This is The Gun Shop Show.
land is everything to me. Uh, when I was born, I was brought home to the family farm, uh, was raised, learned work ethic there, learned uh, appreciation and respect for life and the land itself, and it just became second nature. I had to be there all the time. Whenever I wasn't on the land, I was not happy. But I learned to understand the land, learned to respect it, you know, learned family values. You know, my wife and I have bought a farm uh, besides the one we live on, and uh, it has just been a, it's been a great investment, and it's been some place that my son and I have shared the passion of hunting together, and you know, it's just it uh, you know, land has been you know land has been everything in my life. It is kind of kept me focused and, and uh, gave me a place to be. It's kind of kept me grounded. Hey, you know what makes this, The Gun Shop Show, possible? It's people who believe in the show. And someone who has believed in the show from the very beginning is my good friend Chris Chapman, owner of Whitehead Farm Supply. Here's a message from Chris. Guys, uh, my name's Chris Chapman, uh, owner of Whitehead Farm Supply. And I just want to take a few seconds here to let you know that we are going to be uh, proud sponsors of The Gun Shop Show. And uh, we, we appreciate everything that them guys are doing over there and we just want to show them our support. Thank you. So whether you have two chickens or 2,000 acres, Chris is your man. Give him a call. I guess that's pretty much the ad. Whitehead Farm Supply. Seriously? Always. Listen here, Pilgrim. This here is the Gun Shop Show. Welcome back. It's the Gun Shop Show. As a reminder, if you want if you want to win this week's giveaway, which is this crossbow, this is the crossbow that oh, Eli yeah. shot in the store. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to share the feed. And Trevor. Tag five of your bestest One, two, gun three, four, loving five. friends. Now don't tag just anybody not anybody not, not any just riff anybody we're talking not, about your five yeah. bestest gun loving friends okay not the riffraff we mm -hmm. don't want the riffraff no, we no, want no. the folks that really want to win mm -hmm. this stuff if they don't want to win this stuff we send them back yep we send them back that's it I, you, hey we should show a little video of this crossbow in action let's go ahead and do that all right here this you is go. eli shooting the crossbow in the store yeah and i decided i needed to take the opportunity to shoot this one more time inside the store, and I found the perfect thing double audio. to shoot. Yeah, I turned it down. Okay. <gasps> oh, Barkley. Barkley. I have the dog. So Why long. <clears throat> oh. Weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure he was talking to you. Yeah. There you go, folks. There it is. A working crossbow. That is the crossbow. Am I correct? Chair. That is so the crossbow. The it's it's the kind of famous around here, for being honest. Yeah. He also shot it into the wall, which I was like, why? He's like, I hate this wall. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I hate this chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That chair was pretty crappy. So do you... Well, never mind. I'm not going to ask that question. Okay. I'm moving on from that question. Eli, what are your thoughts on this? Uh... That's what I thought. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He gets me every time that with that, is, with that is, joke. Like, oh, you're man. letting your hair grow out. Mm -hmm, yeah. Wow. Got that whole uh, Joe Dirt thing going on kind today. Of. I'm kind of digging it. He's like, I don't care. If you're on the care. radio and you're like, what are these guys talking about? You're going to want to go over to Facebook, mm -hmm. search Liberty Tree Guns. We're going to be live there. You'll be able to see Eli in all his glory with mm -hmm. his long hair. Looking good today. Mm -hmm. Looking good today. Mm -hmm. And uh, weirdly... Yeah, weirdly quiet. He hasn't said a whole lot today, but that's okay. That's, that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, do you know what we did? What did we do? We shot some guns. We did shoot some guns. We shot some of our guns. Mm -hmm. okay. Not not these guns. Not, no, not, not these, these guns. guns. Don't really have much here. These guns. Mm -hmm. We're working on some Logan's. of our personal. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's came it's came coming around come some kind of way. Yeah, I mean, how anyway. so? How so? Well, I do some of these. 
them push ups oh. for the ra- off, radio off the wall. Yeah, off the I wall push ups. I just do. Them, I just stand up, yeah. them in the air. Mm-hmm. So they're really not that effective. Yeah, but it uh, looks good. Exactly. That's why I said I when you walked my, in this morning, mm-hmm. I could tell you're a guy that's doing wall push ups. I have mm-hmm. to keep my gun bunny figure. You know? That's right. Mm-hmm. Because you gotta, as soon hey, as I lose that, I'm pretty much nothing. You're the face, bro. I appreciate you're the face. That. Well, hey, uh, see, so we told folks how they can win the crossbow, right? We did. Did we let folks know that if they want to know who won the uh, uh, Ruger American 270? We did not. That we need to they do should, that. Uh, they're going to want to stick around. You're so going to want to stay KOD, tuned for that. We're talking about. Come see us a little later in the show. This bad boy Facebook. right here, Ruger yeah. American and 270 Winchester, be a mm-hmm. fantastic deer or hunt rifle. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're giving this away on the show today. We'll announce mm-hmm. the winner, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Mm-hmm. And like we said before, if you want to win that crossbow, the crossbow. The crossbow. Share and tag. Share and tag five friends. Well, that's so simple, man. That's, really, that's so simple. So really let, well, let's talk about some of these guns that we let's shot. Let's talk today. about some of these guns we shot. I think we first, shot your guns. We mm-hmm. shot my guns. Yeah, these are our own personal firearms mm-hmm. uh, that we took out and shot today because we, we thought spent, it'd be fun to do a little uh, gun swap shooting. Yeah. You know, shoot well, each other's guns. We're talking about other people's it. guns, mm-hmm. guns from a movie, guns from TV show, guns from just history. Mm-hmm. But we're, now we're talking about our guns. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these have a special place in our heart Mm -hmm. i have a question for you logan yeah what was the first firearm you ever purchased or you ever had i guess not purchased but ever owned i'll answer both questions including Um, including mm -hmm. bb guns including bb guns Mm -hmm. then it probably was a red rider bb gun you know me too i got that when i was nine years old and i went out and i would mm-hmm. lay in it was uh, my birthday's in january so it was cold out yeah and i would go out and i would lay prone on the ground and i had a pan that i would set i don't know probably 30 40 feet away and i would just sit there and i would just pop 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 just take shots at that thing and i i got pretty good with a bb gun now when it comes to real guns mm-hmm. not so good but when it comes to bb guns i can put bbs you're an expert through bbs uh yeah BBs I've, through bbs i've, I've cut i'm not gonna brag i'm a humble man i don't brag yeah but you never brag i never brag and i'm not a bragger okay but uh i cut a i cut a, a soda can in half one time with a bb gun that's right. That's pretty impressive. If I told you how many BBs it took, it wouldn't seem nearly as impressive. <laughs> but if you imagine how big a BB is, yeah. which like, is uh, this big. like a, this big. an eighth of an inch, quarter inch thick. Yeah, they're pretty small. Yeah, it takes, a little, it takes a little bit of time, but I did it. That's got, impressive, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. So I think I had a Red Rider BB gun as my first gun. Mm-hmm. First gun. I don't remember anything about it, though. I remember having it. I remember what it looks like. Mm-hmm. I don't remember shooting it. Did yours come with a comic book? No. Mine did. No. Might be the difference in our ages. Yeah. Um, I got mine in, uh, let's see, that would have been uh, 89, I think, or so. When it came I got with a that. comic book? Yeah, I got a comic book with it, and it was the Red Rider, mm-hmm. and he had a, uh, this is all based off memory, by the way. Yeah. Um, he, there was a, I remember there being an Indian, and it was either his friend or his, uh, uh, uh what do you call that? Like sidekick or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was red rider and his Indian. I couldn't tell you anything about the story, but I do remember that comic book being a part of that. And just curious, like between the time that I got mine, which was in 89. And when did you get yours? It'd be 2000, 2000. 2001, probably <laughs> 2002, 2003. Yeah, just a little bit. You, just, you were just out of diapers right then, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, eight years old, uh-huh. the diapers until I was seven, <laughs> medical condition. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about it on the show, isn't that a big deal? But we are. Yeah, right. But uh, my first real gun was mm-hmm. a Savage Mark II, I think, maybe Mark One. Okay. It was a twenty two rifle. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I remember yeah. that fondly, bolt action, 10-round magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I shot... I shot that so much. I've put thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds for, through it. It never failed me. Um, I remember that my first time with it, I had never shot a gun before. So we lined up pop cans, mm-hmm. you know, like you do pop cans a little bit full. And I could not hit the target because I didn't understand that you had to line up the iron sights. Oh, yeah. I thought you just put the front post. You got you to gotta do the old yeah, put, this guy. Put the front post on the target and pull the trigger and it, it would work. No. Nothing? No, nothing. Hmm. Just miss malfunctions then. Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, uh, personal malfunctions. Whoa, it's okay, what? buddy. It's okay. Shh, shh, shh. So okay. I, uh, I don't yep. know what it was. I think it might've been a Mark, mm-hmm. a Savage. What'd you say? Savage Mark two. Yeah. I'm not um, sure. It was, it was a Savage. Definitely it was a bolt action. I think it was a Mark series for sure. 
But I don't remember which model. I got one of those. I don't know which one, honestly. What are they up to now? Like uh, eight, nine, Savage 10s, Savage 12s? I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, in the, they have a Mark IV now, right? Something like that. I don't think so. Not no? Savage. Okay. Ruger has a Mark IV. Okay. Then I'm, I'm just conflating we've the had, two. Yeah, we've had some Ruger, uh, Savage Mark II Fs, and recently they were $149.95. It's a fantastic okay. starter. Yeah. 22 oh, well, I got for one. anyone that's interested. I got one for my nephew. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, you uh, did. You yeah. did. Mm-hmm. That's what I was trying to mm-hmm. remember. But yeah, I got the Mark IV from the Ruger all mixed in. The, Dang you, Ruger. <laughs> I'll never buy one of your guns. Except, Except for the one that I actually am buying. We'll talk That's, about that later. Yeah, yeah we'll talk about yeah, that later. So, uh, we, we, we have a few minutes left. Let's talk about this first firearm. Thank you for sharing your story, by the way. Oh, of course. Of course. Um, Anytime. The first thing we fired was the Heritage Barkeep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's a, it's a new release from Heritage. It's a Rough Rider, but pretty much shortened down for like something keeping in the bar. Yeah, or, like a almost, I mean, Snub Nose might be shorter than uh, what the It's kind of between, is. yeah, like a, like a Snub Nose and like one of their full size lines. Mm-hmm. It's, it's right in there between. It's like a nice sweet spot where you're getting enough barrel length for it to be accurate. Uh, you want to grab that thing off the wall yeah, and we'll throw it. it up on the screen. So this thing's a six shooter, I believe. Uh, um, it's Here's single single key. action. Is that correct? It is single action. So you have to pull the, and we checked to make sure all of these guns behind us are unloaded. So this is unloaded, but pull the hammer back and then pull that trigger. It goes bang. Mm-hmm. So nice. So cute. Nice little barrel. I actually bought one for my wife and she loves it. Yeah. So did you get one just for yourself or one for you and the uh, missus? Well, for me and the missus. Oh, um, yeah. Dueling. Anytime I can have an excuse Uh to buy a firearm right including using my wife i do it yeah i'm not proud of it unfortunately my lady is not uh, as gung-ho on firearms as i have Mm -hmm. become over my time here even though i'm still pretty ignorant on firearms overall i mean i work at a gun store i've been here for going on six years and i'm just now starting to permeate Uh, just so you folks know i spent a lot of time in the back on the computer doing computer stuff he still does they don't put guns in my hands (laughs) very often but uh anyway that's pretty much what i do here and we have uh we have some footage we do have some footage of uh me shooting this mm-hmm. uh taking it to the house here we go this is Let's trevor smith out. reporting for the gun shop show shooting the heritage barkeep 22 lr that was a test oh, shot i want to turn that safety off mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Somebody doesn't keep cow. <laughs> That's me. This is Logan Jones reporting for the Gun Shop Show. Today we're shooting the me. Heritage Barkeep 22 long rifle. Cute little look thing. like a baby with a beard. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> with that <laughs> hoodie on? I kind of do. You nice look swaddled. Nice swaddled, yeah. Wow. It's like a little nice, little nice ding. Uh oh, yeah, I think we had a malfunction in the ammo. I don't think we did it all six oh. rounds. I think that's what it was. Yeah, that's that's what happens when you leave it to old Trevor. Yeah, only loaded We're five rounds pretty, out of six pretty rounds. Ammo. So you may see failures to, failures to fire. That's just the ammo. It's really old. Anyway, that's pretty nice. Heck yeah, it was. Heck Oops, yeah. Let's not put that up. <laughs> right. Well, we are, we're ending the first hour, so if you're on TV, you're going to want to go over to Facebook, Liberty Tree Guns, and watch us live. See you on soon. The Gun Shop Show. Hey, podcast listeners and live stream viewers. I wanted to let you know that the Gun Shop Show is made possible by our friends at MidAmerica RV. Being in the customer service industry, I have a really high standard for how customers are treated. MidAmerica RV does it right. I've got my RV through their dealership and I've taken it all over the country. Uh, we made it to South Padre Island. We've gone to Colorado several times. And if you've ever owned an RV, you know there's a lot that comes with it. So who you get it from matters and it's extremely important that you have support after the sale Uh, they're located just outside of Carthage they have a really vast inventory and they are home of I believe they call it a forever warranty so I urge you if you're in the market for one to check them out Uh, it's a really fun and can be very affordable way to get your trips in so visit them at midamericarv.com we appreciate their support of the gun shop show if you're in the market for a travel trailer or fifth wheel check out midamericarv
ready, buckle up, because belts just got better. With Core Essentials, the perfect fit every time. With 40 plus sizing positions, styles for any situation. Whether in the boardroom, crushing sails and taking names. On your next adventure, in the great outdoors. Or when you're done for the day and ready to relax. Get your perfect fit with Core Essentials. People are always asking me, Eli, you seem to get the best deals on things. What is your secret? Old really... glory actions and estate sales. Trevor, I appreciate you jingling, but I have to say the ad part first um, uh -huh. because people need to know oh. about the company. Oh, I thought you wanted me to do And that. then also it's okay. the whole, it's covering up my yeah. face. So right. Again, um, just, okay, just get together. a picture like from their okay. Facebook page because yeah, that's the best got one here. place. And then just put it right up here where the Gun Shop Show logo okay. is. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll do better this and time. Then, uh, and so let me finish the ad and then you can jingle, okay? Okay. All right. So uh, the best place to go is their Facebook page. Oh, glory actions and estate sales. You know what? Fine. I'll just move in between the graphics and finish telling people that the best place to find out when old, old glory actions and estate sales i think i got it that time man our member's girlfriend is on her way to pick up her kids from her ex-husband's house she asked our member to tag along because of her ex's temper as they arrive at the home her ex emerges yelling and gesturing he approaches his ex-wife and grabs her, attempting to drag her inside. Fearing for her life, our member, a trained CHL holder, jumps out of the car with his gun drawn and demands the ex-husband release her. Seeing the gun, the assailant retreats. The situation then takes a bizarre turn as the assailant dials 911 to report our member. As a result of the aggressor's lies, our member was wrongfully arrested. Our member had to undergo lengthy legal proceedings. However, he was ultimately cleared of all charges. Hey everybody, it's Eli at Liberty Tree Guns here at 530 West Fur Road in Carthage, Missouri. And I wanna show you a gun collection that we just bought from an individual. A little bit of everything in this one. We wrote a check for 22 guns. Got some newer lever guns, cool Henry Silver Boy, some older shotguns. This is a cool old 410 double barrel. Um, this, was, this was a good mix. There was some newer type stuff, some old stuff here, some black powder, some cool Colt, uh, black powder revolvers, newer Rugers. Uh, Mark III's, PMR 30, Taurus Judge, couple of Taurus revolvers, got a long slide 1911 right here, and then got uh, this cool Llama 45. We just sold the sister to that gun in 38 Super. This particular individual, this is half the collection that we bought from him. And so I just want to remind you that we pay top dollar for entire collection so we'll buy one gun or a hundred from you and uh, we can offer consignment where we sort of establish what these guns are worth and we pay you out when they sell or in the case of this one we offered consignment we discussed it and then we offered a cash price which was a little bit less than the consignment settlement price uh, but it's quick it was one check and we paid those all out to this individual and uh, Probably the biggest, baddest, coolest one of the whole mix was this Bushmaster BA-50. Uh, so we have everything from little antique 22s to 50 cows in this one collection. I want to remind you that we'd love a chance to buy your collection. Uh, find us at LibertyTreeGuns.com or here on Fur Road in Carthage, Missouri. See you soon. The Gun Shop Show costs money to make. And the Gun Shop Show is brought to you by pecans and cheese not really actually we didn't have any sponsors for this segment and so i decided that i would take a snack break and also i decided if you guys are tired of listening to me eat cheese and nuts that you need to buy an ad 
So from now on, if our ad sponsorships don't sell out, you're going to have to listen to me eat nuts and cheese. In order to sponsor the Gun Shop Show, send us an email at thegunshopshow at gmail.com. Next week, chips. Hey y'all, it's Mel with Pro Outfitters. Once again, I'm on the go, but I always make time for the Gun Shop Show. The Gun Shop Show, the Gun Shop Show, what is it? We don't know. The Gun Shop Show, the Gun Shop Show, here we go, it's the Gun Shop Show. I had to oh, take a sip real quick. Coming in honor back, of Eli. Uh, yeah. Welcome yeah. back to the Gun Shop Show. We were talking about this little thing right here. It's oh, a yeah, that little heritage cutie. barkeep. Mm-hmm. We're gonna kind of do like a round table review just between yeah, Trevor and I. I don't know. I. We've never done anything like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, may become a thing that we do more in the future because I mean we have so many guns to shoot and mm-hmm. you know, getting three opinions is is uh, beneficial to you know anybody who's interested in these firearms. So we want to talk about them and and this one here. Uh, this this particular barkeep. This was my personal barkeep. This right here with the yes with the wood That's grip. Barkeep. They had a version that had pearl grips. Mm-hmm. I have to say, uh, I didn't care for the look of the pearl grips. Uh, I liked the fact that I prefer were they pearl? Myself. Were they pearl? I believe so. They were white. Oh, okay. I, I remember think. they were white, but we don't, I don't have any to show. Probably not real pearl, though. You know. No. Okay. Not. Yeah, it's just the essence of pearl. Mm-hmm. Okay. Essence. Well, still wasn't my thing. Wasn't my thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, what I like about that gun, first of all, uh, okay, not being a a, a, a big time gun fella, I like the look of it overall. It's got a really really good look. I'm gonna throw this back up so folks can look at the yeah. gun here. Uh, it I really, really like is the design. An attractive gun. Feels good in my hand. Nice wood grips. Uh, yeah, um, you know, got those. Uh, what do you call that? There, that that cross hatching um, on the wooden grips. It's it's a it's a brown grip. Got mm-hmm. some inlay on it too. It's a nice design. shade of brown too. It's not mm-hmm. too light. Yeah, not too dark. And I like. Okay, so I think what I remember that I liked about that gun more than the pearl grip mm-hmm. was probably the dual tone of the frame versus the barrel. So you're talking. So yeah, the frame, frame's got the uh, barrel, and I'm str- strictly speaking of aesthetics at this point, folks. But the the uh, I'm I'm using my mouse to hover over it, and no one can see it. But <laughs> I like the dual the duo tone there. I do like that. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I think the the other model is just a black frame. Yeah, white mm-hmm. white pearl grips. Right, and that's yeah, it. and it just didn't it didn't vibe. I wasn't vibing with mm-hmm. it, you know. And I, I gotta I gotta vibe with my guns, you know. I gotta be near them and like feel the essence. I think we're at a point in time with. Uh, uh, firearms that your firearms can look good too. They can be functional, right? And they can look good too. Yeah, we can put a man on the moon. <laughs> we can make, <laughs> we can make an attractive good. firearm. Well, okay. So as far as function is concerned, mm-hmm. uh, the pull on the trigger was nice and smooth. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed that part of it. Uh, sighting it was fine. Uh, it was really easy to shoot. I mean, of course, you, it was single action, so you had to pull the hammer back each time. I didn't mm-hmm. feel like I had to like overreach to pull it down. Like I feel it's that way with 1911s. You know, like, yeah. I know they're dual action. Are they're are not all 1911s are single and double, are they? No, most uh, the traditional 1911 is single action only. Okay, so I owned one for a while before mm-hmm. I sold it because I just I didn't like the fact like it had to like reach over this thing that went, came over the back of my hand. The beaver tail, to, yeah, yeah, just to get and it's super uncomfortable. Like. All right, I guess I could rack the slide. Mm -hmm. That's always a possibility. But so yeah, most of the time with your 1911, you're going to have the hammer back Mm -hmm. like this. You're going to have it on safety, right? And that's just how it's going to live in your holster, right? Um, And that's 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 really it. Uh, You'll pull it out, take it off safety, and it's ready to go. Yeah. But if you don't have the hammer back, you have to either pull the hammer back manually or rack the slide and rack around. Right. Well, I mean, with regards to pulling a hammer back, and that's all I want to speak to. Pulling that hammer back was pretty effortless. It it feels natural. It's a, at a good position where you just, I mean, one handed. Yeah. Bang. Now, do you know anything like okay? So Heritage decided they wanted to make this uh, uh, stunted barrel uh, revolver. Yeah. So uh, they made it, but mm-hmm. I mean, is it based off of any real gun from the past? It's called the Barkeep, but is it would the Barkeep tenders keep anything that was similar to this that you know of? 
not that I know of off the top of my head. I'm sure it's based off of something else because most firearms now, I want to say probably all firearms are based off another firearm design or whatnot. Yeah. But back in the day, I'm sure that bar keeps has something similar to this and a much bigger caliber nice short barrel so they could hide it anywhere they could hide it anywhere in their bar that they need or on their person and it just makes more sense instead of having your traditional six inch barrel six yeah. and a half inch barrel four inch barrel well i have their website here uh let's take a little look at it okay so it's a pint-sized revolver with an oh, old west gray, flare gray pearl yeah meet the yeah. new heritage barkeep built for optimal concealability in a light and portable package the barkeep mm-hmm. boasts fixed open sights for fast action and a clean sight picture several grip options deliver classic western styling to complement the standard black oxide or case hardened frame now i the reason i came here mostly uh was to see if there was any uh information that might lead us to seeing this as some sort of historical right. replica the reason i was getting into that was maybe it would be a good contender for cowboy action shooting but if i remember correctly they had to be very period specific firearms and and they have to be certain calibers and whatnot. oh yeah yeah okay so um yeah, if you saw there, there was the um, the pearl grip mm-hmm. uh, one that's all black that I wasn't into at all. <laughs> yeah, so if, if you're on the radio, it's pretty much a black cylinder, black frame, black mm-hmm. barrel, and then a nice, it, it is a nice gray pearl grip. Yeah, it looks great. It looks good. My my biggest problem with the pearl grip, there's not much not much friction caused by your hand on the grip. Oh, because of the smooth Because it's surface. so smooth, yeah. So yeah. Y- you get it in your hand. Your hands are sweaty or anything. You can kind of feel that moving around. But with 22, it doesn't really matter that much because there's not right. much recoil. But yeah. that was just my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like this gun. I, I bought it kind of on a whim with trevor we made a trevor made me a there deal. was a pact there was a pact formed mm-hmm. uh it was trevor's pact and i joined it or mm-hmm. i guess he asked me to join it How well packs work well uh pact, mm, pact. Uh, okay so uh, uh, let's sound a little bit like you were talking about like a pack like a political no action no committee. i was just saying really i don't close. know how to form those but <laughs> a pact mm-hmm. uh we i if i remember correctly i was like well if you you said something like if someone oh, oh no, no no sorry this all went back to some other gun that you all and when i say you all i mean you and the gun tenders had decided that when we got some in everybody was going to buy one and no one came through oh Mm -hmm. yeah that was and um, then i said you know what i don't uh, that doesn't matter yeah what maybe we'll come to us later but and then i said you know what if you buy one of those Mm -hmm. i'll buy one and i was secretly hoping please don't buy one because i don't (laughs) want to commit to making this purchase and then you uh told me that uh, you posted it your wife was like i want one yeah i was like like, i gotta get one this looks like great facebook content i've never seen one of these Mm -hmm. these look new Mm -hmm. so i took a picture posted it my wife comments logan i want one Mm -hmm. and uh I guess I had to buy one. Yep. And then you told me and I was like, you know what? I mm-hmm. made the pact. I have to come through. And you know what? I don't regret it. I honestly don't regret it. I, I love that little revolver. And one of my biggest issues with buying guns is I don't want to buy mm-hmm. one and then never use it. Right. I don't want to buy it and then it just sit around and basically be some novelty item that d- has no functional form. Mm-hmm. Not so true with this particular firearm because obviously you could use it for varmint. Uh, oh uh, yeah. This would be great. E- even as a backup varmint a gun mm-hmm. let's say you have a burger 10 22 you hunt with have this on your holster or whatever and you right can shoot, shoot with this too i mean mm-hmm. it, it's nice now self-defense mm. probably not no. but just for having a single action cowboy action style gun it's a fantastic choice absolutely what did, i mean logan you haven't really given us a rundown no, of i have thought about the shooting so, part of this i love it i'm i'm smitten with it it's nice. It's short. It's compact. It's light. There's pretty much no recoil. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's been incredibly reliable for me, or at least my wife's gun has. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd buy, I'd buy another one. Honestly, I'd buy two, one for me, one for her. Yeah. I, I mean, they're going to have to get, uh, another flavor out before I could commit to buying another one. Yeah. And I don't, I don't have anybody, you know, my lady, she doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did, she's not interested in that stuff, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't buy a second one for myself if right. I really liked it or if I felt they would make a good gift for someone. I, I think know? it would make a fantastic gift. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a great gun. Yeah. It's affordable. It goes bang when you pull the trigger. It feels good. It shoots good. It's accurate. Mm-hmm. There's really nothing not to like about it. Yeah. Overall, I'd have to agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's. I, if I had one con, 
And I know that's just the tradition of those particular revolvers is loading and, uh, and, uh, this I, one doesn't have the ability to pop. No, the round I, had, out. I had forgotten about that. Yeah, we should. So the, the way you load this is like single action revolver. Yeah, so you open, you open the side gate here, right here. You load your round in hammer back, spin the cylinder, load, low load, load. But when you shoot, you have to open the gate and there's a little tool. I should have grabbed the tool. Yeah. It's like a little thin rod. Mm -hmm. You pop the round out, move the cylinder over, pop the round out, move the cylinder over, pop the round out. And that's probably the worst part about owning the yeah, gun. But that's just, it's yeah. just par for the course. For right. I mean, this isn't, revolvers. this isn't a firearm that you need to do mm. a, a quick load on no. or a quick unload or, or whatever you want to refer to it as. Mm -hmm. That's not a part of what this rifle, or I'm sorry, this uh, revolver is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, and, uh, I mean, cool looking and a great functioning firearm. Now, if heritage could come out with one that had a pop out cylinder, I'd probably buy that one. Be honest, something that'd be pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, it, this kind of reminds me of the Ruger, um, bear cat. It's really similar to the Ruger bear cat. If you could, uh, yeah, I'll find a picture up. and pull that up. Um, the problem with the Ruger bear cat that my biggest issue is that it's kind of price prohibitive compared to this. You're looking at 150 to 200 bucks, depending for the on bear the cat. No, for this right here, oh, okay. the um, uh, Heritage Rough Rider Barkeep is about 150 to 200 bucks. The Bearcat, you're looking at somewhere closer to, I want to say five, 600. And so this Rough Rider just. It's just a better option. Overall. Yeah, way more affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and still got similar function. I have to say, uh, better branding too. Mm -hmm. uh, Bearcat don't mean nothing to me. Yeah. Um, now, especially the fact that that thing probably couldn't take out a bear cat if it existed. I don't know if bear cats a real animal off the top of my head, but I hope not. I hope not too. <laughs> a bear with the mentality like of a cat, a cat the size of a bear oh and the mentality. That's called a lion oh, or man. tiger. Pretty tiger. much. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, terrifying. think uh, it depends on the bear, but uh, anyway, uh, we're coming up on the end mm -hmm. of uh, the segment here, so I won't uh, go on too long about this, but uh, heritage. Uh, Step up your game. I'm impressed. I dig it. I'm going to buy another one. Mm -hmm. One of these days. Stay tuned for our next segment. This is, and always has been, Z The Gun Shop, Shop Show. Hey, everyone. The Gun Shop Show is brought to you by Carthage Lock and Key. If you need anything to do with a lock or a key to success, did they tell you to say that? No, I, I just thought it sounded good. They have a mobile service, so they can come to you and cut pretty much any kind of key. To success! Or if you lock your keys in your to car. To success! I'm talking even security modern chip keys. To success! Trevor, could you just, just jingle the name of the uh, business? Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'll do it good this time. So, with all of my properties and all of the needs I have, I trust Carthage Lock and Key to success. Our evenings are often on weekends are spending Friday and Saturday nights on the deck with our friends. Before everybody would be crowded, we could barely sit together. We were walking on top of each other if everybody was on the deck. Now there's plenty of room for everyone to roam around and relax comfortably and have plenty of space. Specifically, I know that every post they buried to a certain depth with full concrete. They use six by six posts, strapping and hurricane strapping on everything. It's how I feel a deck should be built if it's gonna be built right. Hey everybody, Eli here, and I'm really excited to tell you that The Gun Shop Show is brought to you by one of my favorite places on earth. Located here in my hometown of Carthage on the beautiful historic square, the Emporium on the square, and the Woodshed. It's a art gallery, an event center, a gift shop, they have art classes, and there's very unique Americana artwork from famous artists like Andy Thomas. They handle a lot of his original framing. Just has this incredible old school vibe, and you can feel the history coming through 
through, you have to check out the art gallery, but then as you work your way to the back, my favorite part, the woodshed. Had a lot of great meals in here. They've got burgers. I love their catfish. Excellent. Chicken and waffles even. It's incredible. And it's also a music venue, so we got to see my favorite band of all time, the Ben Miller Band. The ceiling was literally raining down. They were rocking so hard, but the best thing owned by one of my favorite people on earth. That's Cherry Babcock. Check out the Emporium on the Square and the Woodshed. This just a huge cave found beneath the heart of the city. Spelunka shared tales of an underground cavern system in Carthage, Missouri. Locals report the entrance to be at 10th and Garrison. Cave Gang Pizza. Stop in and enjoy wings, wood fire pizza made with local ingredients, and our full bar. Bring the whole gang and uncover a legend. The Gun Shop Show, brought to you by Little Old Ladies. They're little, and they're old. They're little old ladies. This is Trevor Smith, reporting for The Gun Shop Show. We're shooting my personal P365 by Sig Sauer. I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking about the barkeep on that one. Yeah. Some good shooting. Hell yeah. That's why they call me Dicks. Dicks. This is Logan Jones Juicy. reporting for the Gun Shop Show. Today we're shooting the P365 by Six Sour. Let's see how she does. That's pretty great. If you're on the radio, those noises you were hearing were Trevor and I shooting his personal 365. Trevor? Yes. That's a pretty great gun. Yeah, I really dig it, and I want to get into it so bad. But before we do, we, we should, should probably talk let about mm -hmm. crossbow giveaway. Read, reading minds. We're giving now. away this crossbow right here. This is the crossbow that Eli shot in the store. Uh -huh. uh, he took out a chair with mm -hmm. it. He took out a mannequin he took head out with a it. Wall. I think mm -hmm. he took out like an Xbox or something mm -hmm. at one point. It was. Mm -hmm. It got crazy. Took a, a fly off my shoulder once too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I. Th I don't think he was aiming for the fly though. That's uh -oh. a scary thing. Uh oh. Anyway, to win this crossbow the crossbow you're gonna share the feed and tag five friends mm -hmm. five good friends also a little five later the in the show friends. we're gonna tell you folks who won that amazing uh ruger american let's 270 yeah let's pull that thing up ruger american 270 backed by one of the best firearm manufacturers in the industry mm -hmm. lifetime warranty it's a fantastic gun fantastic trigger this one's in 270 so if you want a new hunting rifle you know, check those out. I, you know, a little earlier, I was, uh, I was bagging on Ruger about the Bearcat name, um, and I'm pretty sure I backed out of it's Ruger. It's catchy. I backed catchy. out of it, and I, uh, you know what? And mm -hmm. then I came back in because of the Ruger AR556, the 270, in. won me over again. I'm loving this. Also, we should let folks know that uh, the winner of the, sorry, I'm looking away, but I'm trying to do stuff too. Mm -hmm. The winner of the 270 is also going to win one of these beautiful hats from Caleb Stillians. Yep. Uh, he is the host of, uh, help me out here, Logan. It's rise up rise up yep with caleb stillians he, yeah, he is, does a uh, guided mm -hmm. hunts in alaska uh, pretty awesome he was a pretty he was a fantastic guest excellent storyteller we're gonna do some more stuff with him in the future mm -hmm. um on that hat there if you want to show it back one more time it has his motto which i think is fantastic get after it mm -hmm. it's about just getting up not making excuses and just just getting after it absolutely yeah, man. it's a fantastic I mean, model to live by it's a way to live by and uh eudaimonia is one of those things that is uh, a very pleasing look that up eudaimonia it's a pleasing a way to live but i can tell you uh it is a life filled with disappointment but overcoming things so mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta rise up and you gotta get after things um and someone else a second winner will be winning uh their choice of that hat as well mm -hmm. so, so we'll have two winners one's gonna win the ruger american in 270 mm -hmm. and a hat the other one's just gonna win a hat but it's a pretty awesome oh hat. it's a fantastic mm -hmm. that's like a good looking 40 hat. to 50 dollar ad it's leather good looking. looks good mm -hmm. probably like, smells like leather too mm -hmm. i can smell it just by looking at leather it. has one of the most unique smells i've ever, I've ever smelled 
Yeah, it has. And I wonder, it's I mean, just, I don't know enough about leather. Okay, I'm be honest with you. I know you walked in here and you're like, yeah. that guy right there, he knows, yeah. he knows about the leather. Leather kind of sewer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't know much about leather. I know where it comes from, but I don't know how it's made. I'd be curious to know if that smell is the natural smell or if it's like something just a part of production makes it smell that way. Yeah. I don't know. You know, hey, makes sense. if you know, if you, the listener, knows mm-hmm. the answer to this, why don't you give us a call? You can leave us a voicemail. You can tell us about that or yeah, well, what's the leave us a question. I mean, I think it goes a little something like, uh, I don't know, mm-hmm. two, two, zero, eight, nine, nine one, eight, seventeen, seventy six. <sighs> You know, I'm going to scat that, mm-hmm. but I'm also going to mm-hmm. speak it. So it's 208-918-1776. Yeah, go ahead. Leave us a voicemail. Leave us a little baby about voicemail. absolutely anything. Anything. We'll pretty much Literally. answer any question you guys have. If you, gun related? Right. Not gun related. Mm-hmm. If you heard that and you're like, I'm going oh, to ask him this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, better get Hey. Ask us. We don't care. Literally. We really don't. It's anything. We, we will. Really we'll, we're basically take anything at this point, guys. Come on. <laughs> Please. We, just leave us a voicemail. That's we all we're get, asking. Are you mad at us? Please. Anyway, back to that 365. Out, Did promise. you pull that off the wall? It's right here. Awesome. In my hand. Okay, so that's this, that's my girl. This is Trevor's. My girl. I handle her really nice. <laughs> That is a P365. Now, this one's not all black, and I kind of appreciate it's that. It's not, and I can't mm. remember what it's the like color gray. was referred to. I want to say it was like smoke or something. Uh, it looks good. Uh, yeah, it's a it's different, which I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And honestly, uh, some folks are a little jealous. A little jealous of me that I picked that up. Now, I, you know, jealousy, I'm not, I, I'm not for it, okay? So I tried to let them know. I gave them some hugs, mm-hmm. hugged it out, you know. Some high fives. Mm-hmm. Whispered Some whispered words of encouragement. Atta boy. I'm like, It'll be okay. you got this. You can overcome this. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I purchased that firearm. It's my first. Well, no. I, the first one I bought was that. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. It was a 1911. I talked about it a little okay. earlier. Uh, Para USA. Para. Para yeah. Ordinance. So, yeah. yeah mm-hmm, it was a 1911. And I, I told you how I hated having to like reach up over. Like I was trying to overcome reach adversity. Over. Yeah. Kind of overcome an adversity, trying to pull that hammer mm-hmm. back. I didn't like that. So sold that one, picked this one up. Loving the 365. Okay. I have yet to compare it to the Hellcat. We should. I like, yes, we, we should. should. I like the look of the Hellcat. I'm not mm-hmm. gonna lie. But I also like the look of that one too, and it feels great in my hand. Now I had to get the uh, 15 or 12 round magazine. I think it is. It comes with a 10. Yeah. This is a 10 right here. That's Has a, a little okay. pinky extension mm-hmm. there. Now, um, I got the, I got Looks the, like uh, I want to say it's a 12 round mag. It's the, it's the step. It's the mid, mm-hmm. the middle one. It's, it's yeah. mama bear version of the so, magazine. Yeah. They come with, you, they come with 10 round mags. Mm-hmm. You can buy 12 round mags mm-hmm. and you can buy 15 round. That's mags. right. So the 15 round mag looked a little too goofy to me. Now mm-hmm. I am a man who likes capacity. So uh, I wanted it, although I have not pulled the trigger, pun intended, on buying that. And it came with a 12 there. round, and the 12 round's been ample for me. I mean, in my biggest issue, and I know this is just probably more me being particular than anything else, mm-hmm. I don't like carry guns when my pinky can't hold onto the gun. I want to firmly grip that thing in my hand. Now, with the 12 round mag, Look at that. That, right, that one there is too short for me. We used the 10 round mag because I had my 12 round uh, loaded with uh, what is that stuff uh, called? Personal it, defense yeah, ammo? Yeah, self defense ammo. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to I didn't want uh, to spend that. that. didn't want to dump it it's out. It's too expensive right now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we used that one and I didn't have any complaints about it. So, out of the gate, you know, I've got I'd say average size hands. I felt mm-hmm. good about it. Uh, sighting in. I mean, you saw me shoot. I, that's probably the first time I ever just quick pop, 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 pop. Yeah, it was good shooting. Yeah, and I, I the target. reacquired my easy. sight um, or sight picture mm-hmm. pretty easily with it, even with these sunglasses on and no glasses. I, I, I usually wear real regular glasses. Mm-hmm. So when I'm wearing these sunglasses, I, I can't hardly see everything's blurry. That's why the show looks bad most of the time. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but overall, I'm really pleased with that firearm. I have not had one malfunction with it. Um, mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you how many rounds I've put through it. Probably, I don't know. I mean, maybe a hundred ish, yeah. I guess. Um, super pleased with it. Um, aesthetics wise, the grip. I mean, the, the, uh, what do you call that on the grip? That the grip that as uh, grip texture. Yes. Yep. Uh, isn't too abrasive. Um, I, I feel like it's just right. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's rough enough that your hand's not going to move anywhere, but it's not so rough that it's uncomfortable. Right. It feels really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I I mean, I've pretty much given my opinion on my mm-hmm. own personal firearm. Logan, how do you feel about the P365? I will tell you how I feel about it. Tell him. 
I bought one. I own one. They're fantastic. Uh, they're it's so hard to justify owning a like Glock 43 or Smith the Western Shield when something like this exists. It's fantastic in every way on the Gun Shop Show. People are always asking me, Eli, you seem to get the best deals on things. What is your secret? Old really... glory actions and estate sales. Trevor, I appreciate you jingling, but I have to say the ad part first um, uh-huh. because people need to know oh. about the company. Oh, I thought you wanted me to do And that. then also it's okay. the whole, it's covering up my yeah. face. So right. Again, um, just, okay, just get together. a picture like from their okay. Facebook page because yeah, that's the best got one here. place. And then just put it right up here where the Gun Shop Show logo okay. is. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll do better this and time. Then, uh, and so let me finish the ad and then you can jingle, okay? Okay. All right. So uh, the best place to go is their Facebook page. Oh, glory actions and estate sales. You know what? Fine. I'll just move in between the graphics and finish telling people that the best place to find out when old, old glory gl- actions and estate sales I think I got it that time man land is everything to me uh, when I was born I was brought home to the family farm uh, was raised learned work ethic there learned uh, appreciation and respect for life and the land itself and it just became second nature. I had to be there all the time. Whenever I wasn't on the land, I was not happy. But I learned to understand the land, learned to respect it, you know, learned family values. You know, my wife and I have bought a farm uh, besides the one we live on and uh, it has just been a, it's been a great investment and it's been some place that my son and I have shared the passion of hunting together and you know it's just it uh, you know, land has been you know land has been everything in my life it is kind of kept, kept me focused and, and uh, gave me a place to be it's kind of kept me grounded hey you know what makes this the gun shop show possible it's people who believe in the show And someone who has believed in the show from the very beginning is my good friend Chris Chapman, owner of Whitehead Farm Supply. Here's a message from Chris. Guys, uh, my name is Chris Chapman, uh, owner of Whitehead Farm Supply. And I just want to take a few seconds here to let you know that we are going to be uh, proud sponsors of the Gun Shop Show. And uh, we, we appreciate everything that them guys are doing over there. And we just want to show them our support. Thank you. So whether you have two chickens or 2,000 acres, Chris is your man. Give him a call. I guess that's pretty much the ad. Whitehead Farm Supply. Seriously? Welcome back to the Member's Voice. This week, John, one of our Florida members, is going to share his experience with us firsthand. So listen up, members, because this story could be any one of us. I want you to pay close attention and make a mental note of what happened in a case like this. Here is John's story. Uh, March 30th of last year, I was riding my motorcycle home from a group ride with my local hog chapter, and a guy in a minivan decided to pull up next to me in a bike lane and almost run me off the road. Uh, that guy proceeded to follow me four or five miles, basically cornered me in a one-way one en- beach entrance and called the police and I was actually arrested for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and improper brandishment of a handgun. I went to jail that night, um, but before I went, my wife made probably the most important phone call of our 12-year marriage and that was calling the phone number on the US Law Shield card and getting me the representation that I needed. I'm very, very proud to say that now as I sit before you on January 19th, both charges in my case were dropped. And had it not been for US Law Shield, I can just tell you that I am a first year US Law Shield member when this had happened. I'm going to be a lifetime US Law Shield member because I would not have been able to really to protect myself, especially financially with the costs involved, had it not been for this program. 
Thank you so much, John, for sharing your story with us. Now remember, members, if you ever have to display your firearm, you call 911 first, you give them your name, your location, and ask for the services you need. Hang up and then call the U.S. Law Shield hotline. As always, members, keep sending your story to member stories at uslawshield.com. Welcome back to the Gun Shop Show. Trevor and I went out to the range mm -hmm. and shot some of our guns. Personal I'm talking about guns. personal mm -hmm. collection. Mm -hmm. So far, we shot the Heritage Barkeep. Mm -hmm. Fantastic gun. Highly recommend it. We're trying to get some more of those in. Mm -hmm. As soon as we get them in, guess what they do? They sell, which is nature of the beast. If I can give you a representation of how they sell. Show us. All right, it goes like this. That's how they sell. Wow. That's how fast they sell. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, it's pretty fast. If you want to get in on the giveaway of this crossbow, the crossbow Eli shot and the store, you're going to share the feed mm -hmm. and you're going to tag five friends. And if you're on the radio and you're like, share the feed, what's he talking about? What in the world? You're going to want to go over to Facebook, mm -hmm. type in Liberty Tree Guns, mm -hmm. and you're going to see mm -hmm. our beautiful faces mm -hmm. live there. You're mm -hmm. going to share the feed there. You're going to tag five friends, and then you might just win this little crossbow yeah uh, and it's still dripping with the essence of Eli it smells like mm -hmm. a fresh fresh it's a batch nice, it's a fresh nice batch manly scent so uh, mm -hmm. we were just talking about the 365 yep okay we, we had just shot that we uh, talked about it which it's was mine great carry gun it's mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. my opinion one of the best carry guns on the market now right you really can't beat it in terms of capacity size trigger ergonomics it's it's fantastic but that's all the boxes you just checked all the boxes. Mm -hmm. If but, if I had to but, complain about something, but what is do a it? Con, what is it? <sighs> it's kind of difficult. Let him down. Don't, ha the don't trigger, hurt him, hammer. The don't trigger. hurt him, hammer. What's wrong with the trigger? It could be this much better. Oh, that well, much that's better. not much more. Can you replace the trigger? You can, actually. Oh, okay. You can. <laughs> oh, man. I, <laughs> not saying the trigger's bad at all. It is a perfectly suitable carry trigger mm -hmm. it just could be a little bit better okay Something. all right well what all right d now we the uh the one that you own the sig, th sig 365 that you own is actually the xl version of that i own both okay but we shot the xl version of yours now does that have a better trigger in it it does oh okay okay is that what the xl means no okay what's the xl i'll mean? tell you what the xl means let, let me grab it real quick off the wall because we yeah have well, right i'm gonna here. play this video of you shooting it this is logan jones reporting for the gun shop show we're shooting the p365 bigger brother the xl let's see how she compares that's right we're shooting thunderstorms mm -hmm. should, should we shoot a little too no. fast there <laughs> This is Trevor Smith reporting for the Gun Shop Show. We're shooting the P365 XL. Put a little I think X. she's ready to rock and roll. Put a little extra on that X. No, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> Got to chamber that round. Mm -hmm. There we go. Lean forward for extra accuracy. Yeah, so uh, here's my problem with that. I mm -hmm. remember to do that about halfway through shooting the gun, which means <laughs> I need to shoot more often. Yeah. But yes, I remember, like, I always notice that I'm leaning back about halfway through shooting. Now, I don't know if it's because the firearm uh, is kind of like pushing me off balance mm. and that's what's triggering it in my it's brain to part lean, of it. lean into it. Yeah. But you're right. I notice it myself. I just, I need to shoot more, but, uh, so, so the XL, what yeah. makes the P365 XL, the XL? Mm -hmm. It's a what great is question. It? What is Let's it? show you. Yeah. So here's the XL. Actually, mm -hmm. I'll grab the 365. It'll yeah, be grab easier that, to grab show that, you. 365. Now I couldn't help but notice it looked like the magazine stuck out about a half foot past so the bottom of your this hand. This is actually the um, 15 round mag. Oh. I'm trying to show you guys. That's the 15 round mag. Mm -hmm. So 15 rounds there. Has a nice extended yeah. um, base plate. Yeah, for you six fingered folks out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what makes the XL the XL is that the slide's a little bit longer. I'll try to show this. Oh, and, little, and the grips a little bit longer as oh, well. Okay, so the okay. slides about half an inch, maybe an inch longer. Oh wow! And the grip is longer as now, well. Now, does the length in the barrel help with the accuracy of the firearm? Uh, yes, yes, it does. It helps. How it. much though? I mean, then we're talking about what about an 
inch at it's most? It's so hard to quantify it because you have to be a perfect shooter to get the most accuracy okay, well, out of your gun. I have to what say, it, I'm pretty perfect, and I missed more with yours than I did with mine. I did too, and it might be due to the trigger. Mm. So let's talk about the, sl- the slide length at first. It's about okay. half an inch to an inch longer, mm-hmm. and that gives you a longer sight radius, right? which means you'll be more accurate. Yeah, see, that's something that mm. I, I know that about sights. Yeah. I know that, I mean... It, Art, believe it or not, is kind of one of those things where uh, I learned this. And that's Did you say when you, art? Yes, art. Okay. Drawing. So whenever you want to draw a straight line, mm-hmm. uh, if you want to draw it out so far from the edge of the paper, you or from another line, you put the ruler there, you go out two inches, you make a mark, and then you go down the line, you okay. put the ruler out, you go to about two inches and you make a mark, right? So mm-hmm. the further away you are, the more likely that that line is going to be straight. If you put your points too close together, you could teeter the line. So, I mean, it's pretty much the same idea right oh, you I got two you. points yeah I'm and you're trying you. to create a straight line using those two points and the further away mm-hmm. they are the more likely the bullet will be more accurate so what the the changes they made to the trigger is instead of doing a curved trigger like on the three, 365 you can see oh, that yeah, there yeah, yeah i do see so that. if you're mm-hmm. on the radio Let the me. trigger on the 365 is curved mm-hmm. like a tr- traditional trigger yeah the trigger on the 365 xl is flat. Oh, see, I didn't even notice that, man. Really? Yeah. Which is weird. So the thinking behind that is, and just showing you it is unloaded, the thinking behind that is as you pull the trigger back when it gets to the wall, it's pretty much a straight pullback. So there should be less movement. So it's about right there. You're looking straight. Yeah, that was a really, that was baby movement Mm -hmm. right there. So baby steps. That straight trigger, straight pull Uh should make you more accurate. Yeah. Okay. Now it does take a little bit of getting used to because most triggers are curved. But I Hmm. think more triggers are going to be flat faced. Well, I, you know, I've seen the straight triggers and, you know, uh, let's just assume that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I spent time in the military, yada, yada. Back when I was in my, I was 19, I fired an AR-15 more times than I uh, would have even imagined. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fast forward to now, my uh, knowledge of guns is pretty, pretty dull. So um, I started seeing triggers and I started seeing straight triggers. As a matter of fact, we were going to be selling our own triggers at one point and one of them was a straight trigger. And then, you know, you have the curved trigger. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what why it mattered so are you are you uh now stating to me that a straight trigger uh is better for accuracy than one that is curved yes it should be uh, okay because of physics essentially huh but Hmm. instead of pulling a trigger that's curved that's knocking your hand off center and your force of pull is different the flat trigger forces your pull to be more like this so it's just straight back and forth. Whereas Except the other the one is more like this. It would kind of it's kind of like it, yeah, it's kind of like okay. this. And so the the flat face trigger should allow you to have less trigger movement, and you should be able to shoot more accurately. And just to be sh- now, just, well, this is all sorry. contingent upon how much practice you use, because, right? Which is always the yeah. case, you know. I mean, uh, but uh, so the Sig three sixty five XL comes with by default the straight trigger. Comes with Sig's flat trigger. Now you can buy this and put this in your three sixty five. Okay. So if you wanted to upgrade. I think it's like 60 bucks. You can put that in your 365 and have the same trigger. It's just a smaller gun. Very cool. So yeah, you could absolutely do that. Now, kind of my pros on this, it's optic ready right out of the box. So right here, yeah, remove that. I do remember. Put a Romeo Zero on. I I love that feature. I think Mm -hmm. I'm going to start putting red dots on all all my firearms if I can. I also like that the grip is just a little longer. So even if I have a a 12 round mag, which is flush fit, my hand fully seats on that it's extremely comfortable does that come with the 12 round by default it does it does it comes with a flush fit 12 round mag so you're not going to get any 10 round mags it's either 12 or 15 it comes with the 12 by default because the grips a little longer Mm -hmm. and thus won't fit the 10 round standard six 365 max but still great as a carry gun absolutely it's it's bigger just a little bit bigger so Mm -hmm. it's a little harder to conceal still very concealable it's it's thin enough. It, I think it's, I believe it's the same. It's exactly the same uh, thickness. It's still thin enough that it's better to, better to carry than let's say a Glock 26, which is a double stack. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. I kind of lost well, my train of thought. It's okay, but, man. I you kind of checked out there for a second, and I thought maybe you went into dreamland. Uh, I kind of did. I kind of <laughs> got myself in a daydream thinking about uh, Glock twenty six. It's all right. Well, I mean, okay. So I've never owned a Glock. I don't know that I've ever shot a Glock. I've only heard you guys talk about Glock. And what I would you say, shot a Glock before? No. What We're I would say about yeah, that. I need to. But mm-hmm. you know, they're such a popular brand. I knew about them before I ever even got into guns, like just from listening to rap music. Glock is one of those brands that everyone most everyone knows about even mm-hmm. if you're not into guns it's just synonymous you see that in media tv movies right. they talk about it in uh, music and mm-hmm. songs lyrics so pretty much everyone knows about the glock it, well it seems to me that glock they need to get their stuff together they do they need to come out with something that competes or else they're gonna get left in the dust glock mm-hmm. left in the dust we're talking about it i want to go and chop show gun chop show commercial idea for netfishes i walk into the commercial director will call him's office i say to him hey how's it going he replies good we got your commercial ready to go are you ready to listen yeah but before i do i have an idea i want to flip by you he says okay a bit sarcastically and i say all right and i clear my throat and i start singing this song something similar Net fishes, we're all really good friends, hanging out and stuff, and having memories to talk about when we were young. Net fishes. And I say the business name wrong, like fish nets. He replies, that's terrible. And you didn't even say the right business name at the end. It's your business. Then it cuts to fish snatches. I mean, net fishes. Where we can all be friends. And commercial. The Gun Shop Show costs money to make. And the Gun Shop Show is brought to you by pecans and cheese. Not really. Actually. We didn't have any sponsors for this segment. And so I decided that I would take a snack break. And also... I decided if you guys are tired of listening to me eat cheese and nuts, that you need to buy an ad. So from now on, if our ad sponsorships don't sell out, you're going to have to listen to me eat nuts and cheese. In order to sponsor the Gun Shop Show, send us an email at thegunshopshow at gmail.com. Next week, chips. Welcome back to the Gun Shop Show. If you want to win a crossbow, not any yeah. crossbow, not just one off the street. We're talking mm-hmm. about the crossbow that Eli shot. The very crossbow. In the store. Who makes that crossbow, by the way? Isn't that uh, Surefire? It's Firefield. Firefield, Firefield makes Firefield. crossbow, okay. yeah. So if you want to win this crossbow, you're mm-hmm. going to share the feed, and you're going to tag five friends. Yeah, so easy. Okay, so yeah, hit the button that says the word mm-hmm. share on it if you're on mobile. Uh, and then just start yep. typing your friends' names into the comments uh-huh. and, and Facebook will up. help you out. Yep. Mm-hmm. Facebook if you're on you mobile, out. I believe the icon is an arrow that kind of looks like this, or I said desktop is what I meant to say. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we are ready to you announce. You know what we the, need to do? We need to announce the winner of the of last week's giveaway, the Ruger American 270. You took the words right out of my mouth. I know. It's mm-hmm. like we're on the same Yeah. Almost as if wave. we were planning Or things? something mm-hmm. like that. Like we're squared away or this something. This is what we gave away last week, and oh, we're going to announce yeah. the winner right now. Mm-hmm. Ruger American and 270 and Winchester. And the winner of this is, <laughs> drum roll please, <laughs> Alex Price. Congratulations, Alex. Yay. Thank you so much for sharing and tagging. Really appreciate everybody. You. You. Congratulations. Um, you not yeah. only win that Ruger American, and 270 Winchester, mm-hmm. which is a fantastic rifle. You also win one of the Get After It hats That's provided right. by uh, Caleb Stillian. Caleb Stillian, I'll throw that up here. Also, mm-hmm. uh, fo- so folks know, folks know, mm-hmm. uh, we allow one week to claim the prize. So, uh, Alex, if you're watching, uh, please mm-hmm. reach out to us by Facebook or call, and we'll make arrangements. And we will get you taken care of. And uh, also uh, the hat as well. Um, anybody else, especially with the Firefield uh, too. Yep. Uh, once we announce the winner we allow one week for uh for uh pickup so for the Dang. hats uh 
a lot of we spoke to Caleb, they were still making them, so they mm-hmm. might take a little bit longer to get, mm-hmm. but you will get them. Just bear with us. It's a free hat, and it's a fantastic hat. Yeah, it's a but great hat. we had two hats to give away. We gave away one of them. Mm-hmm. And the Who's next, the next winner? The next winner on that hat is... <laughs> James Hanel. Yeah. Congratulations, James. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to everyone Thanks for, for sharing, uh, sharing and tagging and tagging. Five friends. Yeah. It helps a lot. Um, we love giving stuff away. Mm-hmm. And as long as the show continues to grow, we'll continue to give away great prizes. Um, and hopefully you don't just join us for the prize. Hopefully you join us because you enjoy the conversation and, uh, Absolutely. you know what we have to offer. So mm-hmm. uh, anyway, we, uh, we, we uh, shot some more guns. We shot some more guns. We shot some more guns. Yeah, believe it or not, we shot more guns. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, how about, uh, how about we show folks what this one is? Let's go ahead and show them. Here we go. We're rolling away. All right. Roll this is clip. Trevor reporting for the Gun Shop Show. We're shooting the Ruger AR556 mounted with the HS403C Look at uh, me. Mm-hmm. optic by Hollywood. Able, Able to read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, read. Take out this uh, stump. Oh, I did hit it. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I just saw it. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell either. I have no idea if I hit it or not. Mm. I don't know if the red dot's on. This is Logan Jones reporting for the Gun Shop Show. We're shooting the Ruger AR-556 with a Holosun HS-403C red dot. I almost lost it there. Let's put some brown fuel in. Yeah, you've been falling apart on us. Good stuff. That's pretty freaking nice. It was pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Um, we took that optic right off the shelf That's uh, right. to demo it, do some mm-hmm. testing uh, versus the Romeo 5. Just threw it on there. Should have cited it in, but... Hey. It's okay, man. Hey. I mean, it Next was time. out of the box, Next but time. here's one thing I can tell you. Uh, you Did you grab that off the wall, by the way? I got Logan? caught up in the film. It's okay, man. It was quite the moment, but... Um, we checked the documentation before we took that out. And as you guys can tell, or if you can't hear, it was raining while we were out. And that's how hardcore we are about shooting guns. We don't care if it's cold and wet. We're going to do it anyway. But anyway, we took it out. Uh, That optic is all weather safe, I believe is what the documentation itself said. So uh, Mm -hmm. not harmed. Um, Great little optic. I mean, obviously it needs to be sighted in. That one particularly right there is about uh, what? uh, Two, about an inch and a half off off of the off of the uh, what do you call that thing the rail there yeah the Picatinny rail, the Picatinny it, rail. it sits about two inches up so when you're shouldering it you get a nice clear picture mm-hmm. right down the rail red dot is it's pretty easy to pick up you don't really have to scrunch your head down too much I, which is really nice I actually didn't have an easy time sighting on that and while it could you have been it? a fact yeah I could I was smashing my face still like craning my head over now well I noticed that um, in the footage you were also kind of leaning back i probably was because that's how i yeah, you know i'm novice it, yeah. i'm novice but well, you know when next time we shoot logan mm-hmm. uh, please don't be afraid to tell me to adjust my stance because i'm super novice yeah this if stuff. you lean forward to it it forces the gun down a little bit and i think you would have had an easier time probably the red dot. I, I mean i had the sunglasses on the hood was on i mean there's a lot of elements that mm-hmm. were really kind of messing and with the rain me. and i'm not making excuses i legitimately had a hard time seeing the dot on that thing and mm-hmm. it's not the firearms fault it's not it's it's my fault. As uh, you saw when Logan shot it, he wasn't having any issues. He's much more experienced than I am when it comes to firing guns. Yes, you are. You own. I appreciate you saying that. twice as much as I do. You go out way more than I do. You, so you're not. You're no novice. I mean, yeah. you're you're I've, amateur at best. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. At worst, at worst. That's what I feel like. Sometimes. You're basically a professional. You're getting paid to uh, shoot guns now, man. That makes you a professional. I guess that does make mm-hmm. me kind of. That's how professionalism works. Cool to think about. But the the cool thing about this optic is it's a red dot. It takes it takes a little. I think think CR one two three battery or something mm-hmm. like that. Oh, and it's but solar powered exactly too. What I was about yeah. to say. So if you for some reason run out of battery, it has a solar panel right there on the top that's, that's going right. to keep it powered until you're able to put another battery in. Mm-hmm. Now, if you lose you lose sunlight for whatever reason or it's not charged it'll switch back over to the battery so if you yeah so it was it stated in the documentation that it was smart now i think by default it works off of the solar power and then unless, if that yes. defa- if that fails it defaults back to mm-hmm. the battery which is a pretty common battery these days it's one yeah. of those little uh, about you know a little smaller than a quarter maybe around a nickel sized uh yeah battery, I uh, think. man they're everywhere they're pretty cheap yeah. you can you can buy them pretty much anywhere i think we have some that we sell yeah. here as well well that one retails for 205 
five, two of six. Is that right? Uh, yeah, two of five, ninety nine, maybe. Yeah, and it did have right around two of five, two of six. It did have a different mounting plate, so it didn't sit so high. Off so yeah, of if you don't layout. like how how high this is sitting, it also comes with more of a flush fit. It will, mm-hmm. but this optic right here, this section right here, is the, the optic mm-hmm. pretty much right above the rail. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that outfit is straight out the box mm-hmm. other than the hollow sun. And, and it's not my first time shooting an AR, but I will say this, and I'm probably going to end up uh, getting in trouble when I get home because yep. I have not announced this at home, but, um, oh, oh snap. that is, that's, that's my, that's mine. Mm-hmm. Future mine. Uh, I'm using it or I'm, I'm buying it on our new, uh, um, uh, freedom buyers club program. Mm-hmm. I'm the pilot person great, on it, or I, I jumped. Yeah, yeah, I jumped on it because I wanted to give it a try to see mm-hmm. how it works. Um, we, uh, uh, you can uh, earn what are called freedom bucks on mm-hmm. it if you um, tell your buddy about the program. They can use your phone number and come in and and tell a uh, hunter about it, and he'll give you five dollars on your layaway yeah. and five dollars uh, on the person that referred you to layaway. So you earn a little bit of money to help pay mm-hmm. down the layaway. Also, uh, you know, we're trying to do uh, weekly reminders and let people know remind them. To do payments and stuff. So I wanted to be the first one on that program uh, as soon as we launched it internally. So I've been doing a part of that and uh, it's been great so far. Yeah. I've not had any issues making my payments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll probably have that paid off. I have 90 days to pay it off. Mm-hmm. So every week I'm making a little payment. I think my payments uh, were like 55 if I wanted to break it up evenly, which mm-hmm. makes it super easy for me. You know, I mean, and you don't have to remember to make payments. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, really we have yeah. the option to do uh, uh, auto payments. Mm-hmm weekly, bi-weekly, stuff like that. That's stuff that you'll want to talk to Hunter about um, if you get set up on that. So any of our firearms uh, you can get on the Freedom Buyers Club, I believe. Uh, are we doing that on uh, we doing that on pretty much all of our inventory? Are we- yeah, any okay. of our inventory. Um, yeah, it should be any of our inventory you can put, uh, put on our layaway program. It's what it used to be called on the Freedom Buyers Club program, yeah. essentially. 10% so, down. So let's say you wanted to put this, this mm-hmm. Ruger AR-556 on layaway. We're looking at about 70, 70 $75 70 down. down and mm-hmm. you, you hold it for 90, uh, 90, 90, 90 months. months. Wow. <laughs> You'll never get it back. <laughs> 90 days until you can pay it off. Um, we, we have new ways to make regular payments, as Trevor was saying. So the program is really a lot more fleshed out mm-hmm. than the layaway program. There's There was ways to get additional money down on your uh, layaway through Freedom Bucks, through uh, referring your friends, they using your phone number in the store. So it's a pretty exciting program. We're still fleshing out some yep. details. There's still some stuff we want want to add to it and expand yeah. on it but it really is going to be the future we'll get some terminology on our website real soon about it um, we're kind of doing this phase into it and, and getting everybody yeah, on board kind of doing it, so. a little bit of testing on it trevor mm-hmm. you know the first one doing it so he's kind of feeling it out seeing mm-hmm. if there's any bugs yeah. anything we need to improve on yeah, we don't want to we don't want to promote something that uh it's not know, ready for our customers yeah. aren't aren't interested mm-hmm. in because believe it or not we are your friends in the guys in business and i know that may not sound legitimate because we're a business but mm-hmm. i want you to know i live by the golden rule rule myself and that is to treat others as you would be treated and that doesn't mean take the deepest darkest thing that somebody mm-hmm. would do and imagine that they would want st- no it's just be good do the right thing mm-hmm. and those are the values that we uh we we try to do business by so Absolutely. this is just another one of those programs but we uh okay so i shot that mm-hmm. particular firearms the first time i shot it how'd you feel about it i felt good about it i, mm-hmm. I experienced no uh jams i didn't have to do sports on it if anybody <laughs> knows what that means yeah. um but uh anyway i didn't have to do anything to you know do any clearing or anything i just popped off my i mean we did five rounds a piece so mm-hmm. i didn't do a full mag on it yeah, the weather kind of weather kind of stopped us a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we, we we had a bunch more guns we wanted to talk about, and we'll talk about that in the show mm-hmm. overdrive. But it looks like we're we're maybe getting close to the end of our segment on the radio. That's so, right. Yeah, yeah, end of the portion yeah. on the radio. So if you're listening on the radio, you're going to want to go to Facebook. Mm-hmm. You're going to want to type in Liberty Tree Guns. That's right. Jump over to us. We're going to be so live. Simple. You'll be able to see all of this, all of the guns we're talking about as oh, I hold them up yeah. and kind of showcase them oh, for you. You're going to yeah. be able to see all of that. Mm-hmm. You're also going to be able to get in on the giveaway you're gonna want for the that crossbow, crossbow you're by gonna sharing want that the crossbow. feed and tagging five friends. So simple. It's the best crossbow I've ever used. And it's kind of a mini crossbow. It is a mini it's a one-handed yeah. little mini crossbow. It's a fantastic. It is the crossbow Eli shot in the store. A great option. Just share the feed tag for five friends to be entered to win that. We'll join you on the show for drive on the gun shop show. Kids are curious by nature. Do your part to prevent unwanted tragedy from striking in your home by doing these simple tasks. Consider gun locks and or gun safes for storage of firearms. 
Don't leave your guns unattended where children could reach them. Discuss with your children the rules of firearm safety. Sign your kids up for hunter safety classes. Firearm safety in the household is your responsibility. Do your part to prevent unwanted tragedy from striking in your home. For more information, visit jaspercountysheriff.org. Buckle up, because belts just got better. With Core Essentials, the perfect fit every time. With 40 plus sizing positions, styles for any situation. Whether in the boardroom, crushing sails and taking names. On your next adventure, in the great outdoors. Or when you're done for the day and ready to relax. Get your perfect fit with Core Essentials. Shop show, the gun shop show. What is it? We don't know. The gun shop show, the gun shop show. Here we go, it's the gun shop show. This is the gun shop show, and you just caught me on the sip cam. Mm -hmm. That's in honor of Eli, who uh gonna be here today. Uh, yeah. I he's mean, off doing, I don't know who this guy is. He's off. Oh, he's who right there. This guy. There's Eli. Yeah. <sighs> he's so quiet. He's kind of let himself go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, and he's got real It's sass weird, too. but mm -hmm. he, he has like dead eyes. Yeah. Well, at least he's got bushy eyebrows. That's mm -hmm. true. And cares about the sweat of his brow. It helps. Mm -hmm. And he has, the hair looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. What conditioner are you using? All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so um, real quick. Yeah. Uh, I look like I might be a little under the weather. Yeah, uh, what's going on with that? I don't what's know, going but I'm going to... You feeling I'm gonna, okay? I'm amping up Z. Uh, Go ahead and amp it up. Oh, wow. That's oh, not, that's not what you want there. I need Warm to satch purple. it. I need to satch it up. Here we go. It. Now I look like Sorry, I'm folks. Some technical difficulties. Yeah, just a little bit of dead... <laughs> Dead skin look there. No big deal. There you go. So Looking we were better. we were Come talking about the uh, this right here. Bam. Yeah, that Ruger, Ruger AR five five six. Uh, this mm -hmm. is this is mm -hmm. Trevor's mm -hmm. personal future future mm -hmm. personal. Yeah. yeah, his gun. Getting that on that the future. FBC. Right mm -hmm. Yeah, you know me. FBC. Ooh, yeah, that's FBC. Freedom Buyers Club. Mm -hmm. You need to you need to check it out. But Logan. Yeah. What. Uh, what did you think? Have you ever fired a Ruger AR-556 before? I have. You actually, have? Uh, I so have. This is old news to you. Well, huh? no. I still appreciate the firearm. Oh, okay. I mean, Ruger makes a fantastic, fantastic AR-15. This is the AR-556. Mm -hmm. I like that they use a nice M-Lock rail here. Yeah. It's currently one of the best mounting systems on the market, so mm -hmm. that's nice. The trigger's nice. Mm -hmm. Stock's nice. Grip's nice. Now, I mean, it's an AR-15. That Ruger did a good job with it that stock on that yeah that slideable stock now when did that become standard uh uh for a f uh, ar that hasn't always been like that has it like when didn't that used to be aftermarket like the no, expandable they, butt stock at, at first they started as kind of fixed stocks and then mm -hmm. Stuff like this came out, and they yeah. kind of just it just makes more sense that you can change your length of pull for how long your arms are and whatnot, or yeah. what's comfortable to you. And so it just makes sense, and it kind of just right. overwhelmed the market. And now it's just standard, right? Yeah, if yeah. yours comes with a fixed stock, that's more of a personal preference for you, right? But the majority of them are going to come with a collapsible stock like that, yeah. Well, I don't have I didn't feel like I had any comments on the functionality of it, other than what I said about the uh, no mm -hmm. jam issue, but yeah. trigger pull, um. I, you know, I'm still trying to remember that stuff when I shoot. Right. I mean, I certainly remember it long after I shot it that I should have been thinking about it, but I'm, I'm going to get better at this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get better. And then before you know it, I'm just going to be in here like review, bam, 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 bam. And you're going like, left I'm and right. sold. So much review, mm -hmm. so much reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's an AR. Ruger did a good job. I'm, I'm glad that Ruger is making an AR because I love them as a company. Their warranty, lifetime warranty. Mm -hmm. They'll take care of you. I like that. I like the sound it. of lifetime. You send it in, they get it fixed. They send it back in no time. It, it's fantastic. It's a good AR. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, good self-defense, home defense rifle, and uh, I think everyone should at least own one AR. So you're jumping on the bad wagon? Yeah, I am. It's awesome. One of these days I'm going to get an AK too. Thank you because, uh, you know, I like them both. You know, I don't have one that I like more than the other. I like them both. They both have their merits. Mm -hmm. I, I myself prefer the AR-15 just because it's more modular. They're not saying the AK is right. not well, modular. Be, yeah. But... Uh, 
modern AKs are a lot more mm -hmm. modular than they were. So. Now, see, I want the other one so that I can have the AR in the right mm -hmm. hand and the AK in the left hand, and then it'd be like, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, how you do yeah, it. Yeah, yep. that's well, it's the right way. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we're being honest, yeah, the right it's way. really the only way. It is the only way. If you're not way. shooting your AR and AK like that, what are you doing? Then you're just not shooting right. You were, yeah, and not. I can't call you Tex. Mm -mm. Okay? Mm -mm. And I want to call people Tex. Only Tex dual wields. It's just, everyone knows that. I had an idea for a business name that was very, it was, a it was for my, uh, you know, I have the whole net fishes thing mm -hmm. where we can all be friends, but yep. we do web uh, design and development. We do, I do design. I'm the designer, but uh, we, I do the design and then we also do web development. And so we were going to spin off this company mm -hmm. uh, so that it would very be very specific to the gun industry itself and something that was appealing to it. But I hesitate to say it. I want, I'll tell you off, off camera, but I want to tell you, okay. it's, just remind me to tell you about it. Um, you mentioned it and I almost said it. And then I was like, I can't just stop talking now. That would be rude. I should at least start, keep talking long enough to delay the next thing that I want to play. Uh -huh. And that's and a that little is? thing called 22 questions, Logan. 22 and questions. Yes. This is uh how does it work? Well, okay. So I'm going to play, I'm going to play 22 questions. Okay. In 22 seconds. Okay. And I need you to answer as many of them as you can. 22 questions is in 22 seconds, and yes. I have to answer as many as I can. Yes. Are you ready? Impossible. Okay. Well, let's let's see how this goes. Okay. Because I've never done this before. This is the first time. Okay. For 22 Thanks questions. Thanks for just springing this on me, by the way. In 22 seconds. If you lost all your possessions on one, what would you want it to be? What are you natural at? What issue would you always speak your mind about? What's the worst movie you've ever seen? What musician changed your life? Why do you love tacos? Where is the Pacific Ocean? What languages do you speak? What's the worst movie you've ever seen? How's your mother? Did your parents love you? Are you mad at me? Why would you call Logan? Why? What was the last name you saw? Him? And for the missus, where is the furthest you've driven? Have you ever seen a ghost? Wouldn't it be nice if we were older? Who let the dogs out? I'm Ron Burgundy. What's your typical day in the life of Logan? So, how many of those... Uh, can you answer Logan? Every single one of them. <laughs> um, let's take it from the top. Yeah. Actually, I don't really remember. Yeah. Half of them. Um, no, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> Last thing I thought of is 22 questions is way too many in 22 <laughs> seconds. Um, what else did you ask? Yes. Exactly. My parents loved me mm. or at least they said they did. Doesn't wow. mean they did. That's three so far. Worst movie I've ever seen. <sighs> Battlefield earth. Uh, that's a good one. I don't mean the movie. That's a good answer. It's, I caught that one morning. I was moving. Yeah. It was it, that, that's the one with John Travolta. Correct? Oh yes, yeah. Okay. And it's, it's absolutely, absolutely horrendous. terrible. Nothing so, about it is redeeming yeah. except I, uh, for how funny it is. Well, the best part of the movie is uh, when you turn it off, <laughs> or yeah. whenever uh, it ends. You yeah. know, like you turn it on and then the credits mm -hmm. roll. That's the best part of that movie. But mm -hmm. I caught that one morning. It was probably about I don't know four o'clock in the morning. I'd gotten up early. I was moving that day. Okay. And and I just gotten up. It was snowing like crazy. I was like February 1st or something. And it was like probably a good it's foot of months. snow. It's the worst time to move, but yeah. I had to move. Like it was time to move. I didn't plan this thing. Anyway, I've got a big old box truck out my door, but I'm getting everything together and I decide I'm going to put something on the TV just to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, keep my mind busy. And that movie was on and I was like, what's this? I've never seen this before. And yeah, it took me probably about a solid 30 seconds to realize that it's a terrible movie. Good yeah. answer to that question. And by the way, mm -hmm. so far, you're the winner. I'm the winner. You got the most questions answered so far. What do I win? In 22 just the honor of knowing that you won 22 questions. Ew. Now I have to get a breakdown of this, of this game because I think it's kind of funny mm. in a way, right? Yeah. 22 questions in 22 seconds. Now did the happy music playing in the background changing to the death metal on a scale of one to hilarious? How funny was it? One to hilarious. Mm -hmm. A four. Oh, I, I'll take a four. I'll take a four mm -hmm. considering that hilarious is five. Now you would think that switching from the happy music to the death metal mm -hmm. would make me remember the death metal question mm -hmm. better. Yeah. No. Oh, wow. Don't remember. It. it was actually that question was what is a typical day in the life of Logan? Oh yeah. How did I forget mm -hmm. that? I have no idea. Yeah. Which I already know um, the answer to that question. Well, we'll, we'll talk. Let me answer the question. Oh, okay. My question. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Typical day. Typical day. Typical day in the life of Logan. So wake up mm -hmm. um, usually about 4.50 to 5 o'clock. Yikes. I know. Super mm -hmm. early. I do that every morning, even on the weekends. It's, it's kind of sad. Yeah. But I get up. I go to work. I work. I come home. And then I either cook dinner 
I usually cook dinner. Yeah. Uh, I usually cook dinner. You're the cook at your house? Uh huh. Of course, yeah. I can cook, but I like cooking. Yeah. So I kind of just like it. So I kind of it. It. take it from her. I'm the same way, man. Yeah. I like to do stuff. Back whenever I used to work mm-hmm. in, the, uh, in the homes with the developmentally disabled, I yeah. chose to cook mm-hmm. because, first of all, I wanted them to have good food. And that's not. I know I told you earlier that I'm a super humble person, yep. but honestly, that's what I wanted because the mm-hmm. alternative was like worse than hamburger helper. You know, like uh, imagine uh, someone who was incapable of reading directions. Uh, just, okay. Trying to make, it's just, it was bad. All right. Yeah. Let's just say it was bad. You didn't have chefs in there making mm-hmm. these guys food. So I would, uh, go the extra mile and try to yep. make stuff from scratch. And that's kind of where I learned to cook and it was just a mm-hmm. passion. So I enjoyed doing it and learned to do it. And then I do it at home, but I digress. We digress. What were we talking about? Guns. Talking about shooting mm-hmm. damn guns. We shot our own guns on the show. That's right. So you can get to know us a little better, kind of get our taste, what uh-huh. we like, what we don't like. Yep. Well, I mean, there are guns. So of course we like all of them. Right. Or right? else I wouldn't have put money in them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And the next gun, what is the next gun that we shot? I think it was the Q mm-hmm. Sugar Weasel. Mm-hmm. Go. That's right. That's Logan my Jones personal gun. gun. Here's me shooting. Show. We're shooting the Sugar Weasel mm-hmm. with a tra- uh, not trash, not Thunder Chicken Suppressor with a burn proof gear. Uh, I like that, dude. And a Sig mm-hmm. Romeo 5. I like that gun. Ammunition, so, it, so it should be it pretty it dang a quiet. more enjoyable to shoot. See, I'm not wearing my ears. Well, I think it's just a cool effect. Let's test her out. You know, it you looks don't good. see cloth on no. guns very often. It sounds like a paintball gun. I just yeah, it does. Chase suppress, so fun. If you have it, you need to. This is Trevor Smith reporting for the Gun Shop Show. I'm shooting the uh, Q Sugar Weasel with the uh, Romeo Five optic on it, and we're shooting suppress today, folks. I was blown away. Not really blown away, but I was really surprised at how non firearm like. This thing, fired. yeah. Like, the loudest part is the bull. And the, clear, folks. What do you call the that? Action. That was fun. No, well, like yes, but I just mean the buffer, the buffer spring collapsing back down Pop after it had cords. been compressed. Mm-hmm. Do what? It's like I caught up in the cords. Oh well, you know, like it recoiling and coming mm-hmm. back was the loudest part of the gun. That needs its own silencer, <laughs> right? Yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. But here it is. The sugar weasel with mm-hmm. a thunder chicken suppressor. Thunder I have a chicken. Burn proof cover. Um, mm-hmm. This just suppressors get so hot, like incredibly yeah. hot. Like, well, they're taking a huge amount of energy mm-hmm. and and hot gases, right? And it spirals inside mm-hmm. of it. So, I mean, not only is it an explosion, but now you've got the the friction of movement inside of there. So it probably gets hot, but it probably gets hotter before it gets colder. Yeah. So this just prevents you from getting burned especially if you have it slain when it's up against your body after shooting suppress these mm-hmm. suppressors can easily get eight eight hundred to a thousand twelve hundred 1200 degrees which is basically just melt your skin as soon as you oh, touch it yeah it's crazy how hot this was i didn't have this on at first mm-hmm. and i went to just just touch it to see how hot it was after about a mag mm-hmm. and it burnt me wow Im- immediately like just, just i was i was it? like and it hurt my finger. Wow. It, it burned. It was, it was wow. pretty bad. Did you so, lose any uh, of your skin off your finger? No, but, but the skin on my finger got really, really tight. Oh, really? like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I put this on there. Uh-huh. It, it's a lot better. It does keep the suppressor a little warmer. Right. I guess. Well, I'm sure but it prevents me from getting burned. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah this is the sugar weasel. It's in 300 blackout with the suppressor and some sonic ammo. It, I mean, it, it doesn't even feel, it doesn't even sound like a gun. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It really is. And if you have the chance to buy a suppressor, you should do it. Yeah. You should do it. Well, we have they're becoming more plentiful too. They are. They are. And it's becoming easier and easier to get one uh, with the, um, our sponsor shop kiosk. Mm-hmm. makes it super simple. All your information is right there. It's easy to just get that all that information typed up into a form and sent off. Pretty easy. How much time does it take for someone to go through that process? And I'm not talking about the wait time. I'm talking about going to the kiosk and being done. Yeah, absolutely. So 
let's say you already have your suppressor picked out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you just go up to the kiosk, you type in all your information and we get your fingerprints. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a photo. It's kind of like a 4473, a bunch of yes and no questions. Once that's done, we send all that off and uh, you pay your tax stamp and whatnot. But that entire process of getting the information on the kiosk done and paying your tax stamp, probably looking about 15 minutes. Wow. That's honest. really fast. I mean, 15 I, it, minutes. I hate that that process has to happen because it seems silly to me. I mean, the, I, we're is. talking about folks who just don't know what they're, uh, um, against if you want to say mm -hmm. that way you know uh, what they feel like some the law should suppress right. the ability for people to be able to use suppressors based off of pop culture references mm -hmm. which i mean in that instance that firearm was incredibly quiet but it was still loud enough the, yeah. yeah you're not going to walk in a movie theater mm -hmm. take someone out walk out and not get noticed no i mean that's just not possible but mm -hmm. you could be in your backyard you know, popping off a few rounds yeah, and, and someone would just hear the clickety clack of that thing and yeah. not think of fire. Like I shot, fire. I shot this at, rounds at my house in my backyard and it well, was actually my parents, my parents' backyard. Yeah. And our uh, cousins and uncle and aunt live right down the road uh -huh. and they heard me shooting. Oh really? Well, they, they were like, Oh, we thought you were hurt, uh, shooting some kind of like BB gun or 22 yeah. or something like that. So yeah. it, it definitely reduces the sound signature. Mm -hmm. And honestly, mm -hmm. it's really just to protect your hearing because guns are loud. Yeah. Like incredibly loud, yeah. like damage your hearing forever loud. Mm -hmm. And so I think everyone should be able to own suppressors. It doesn't make them so quiet that no one can trace where you're shooting right. from. Right. Well, I can tell you just from my neighborhood alone, uh, I sit there at night and I hear sounds that I'm like, that's got to be gunfire. Mm -hmm. That's got to be gunfire. So if it is, then I mean, that's alarming to me. Right. But if it's not, then, I mean, what difference does it make? I feel like I'm hearing gunfire and mm -hmm. it's not gunfire. Then it's not doing any good to keep make guns sound like guns. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, absolutely. It, there's no benefit to that. You mm -hmm. know, you could hear, I've heard things fall like that have a wide, uh, um, you know, like imagine a four by eight piece of wood yeah. falling over. Boom. Mm -hmm. Like, if you heard that in the right way, you would think it was a gunshot. Now what? You're going to call cops and they're going to show up and then what? I mean, it's just loud sounds don't equal gunfire. That's kind of the no, and the, the, this the is, thing, the moral of the story. Suppressors are especially important if you want to use a gun for home defense mm -hmm. or you hunt yeah, or you shoot regularly where one trip to the range, no suppression or hearing protection you're getting permanent hearing damage. Yeah. It's going to happen. <clears throat> it's not a matter of if, if it's a matter of when it will happen. And suppre suppressors prevent that. It only takes one time. It, yeah, it really. And your hearing's not going to grow back. Right. Gosh, it would be cool if it did though. It would be super cool. Yeah, man, man we should do a real hard wish on that. But honestly, I can't imagine shooting a gun indoors yeah. without hearing protection. Yeah, imagine someone breaks into your house and you're, you got to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're already having to defend yourself mm -hmm. and now you're deaf. Because who's going to yeah. pop on ear protection? Right. When, you know, like, right. somebody's busted in. Honey, honey, somebody's broken. You're like, wait, wait on. I got to <laughs> get my ear put. I, I need to get my eyes and ears. I need to get my eyes and ears. No, you're going to grab the first gun uh, that's next to you that's loaded, and you're going to... Uh, bust caps. Yeah, you're going to bust caps. You're going to bust, bust caps. caps. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can do that with a, a firearm that's suppressed, you're going to want to do that because it's going to save your hearing. Yeah, but uh, all in all, I would say my impressions of that particular firearm were uh, positive. I had a positive experience with it. Um, I enjoyed firing it, and it really... I mean, it did not feel like... I, it didn't feel like the Ruger 5.56. Now, is the 300 uh, blackout, is that what it is? Yeah. Compare that round to a 5.56 round. Um, so, essentially, it's a bigger bullet. It's a 30 cal bullet as opposed to a 22 bullet, essentially. Um, but it's, so it's a bigger bullet. It's usually moving slower, but it has a lot more mass. And because mm -hmm. of that, it has more energy. Would you say that, um, it's a more powerful round then? Like as far as, uh, explosion, whenever explosion. the explosion, well, five, which five, one's going to have the greater recoil, I guess maybe that's a good, it question. should be 300 blackout. So five, okay. five, six is about three pounds of recoil. Whereas, um, 300 blackout has about nine pounds. It's it's very similar to an AK 
okay. a 7.62 by 39 round, except that it's a little more versatile in the loads you can get. You can get supersonic loads mm-hmm. for reaching out pretty far. They're, those usually around 125 grain, 110 grain, whatnot, to subsonic rounds that are more for like home defense or close quarter combat. You're looking at about 220 grain, 200 grain around that area. Okay. And those rounds are typically quieter. That's pretty, that's the reason I got 300 Blackout is because it's really versatile. Right. You can use it close quarters, you can far away. It's really nice to suppress. Whereas if you try to suppress 5.56, five, it's always going to be loud because it's such a fast round. You can't make it subsonic and uh, also effective. Uh, mm hmm. Like, well, see, I was trying to draw the comparison in the, uh, mm. the, uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. When you pull the trigger and the action occurs, mm. the fact that the, the, the sugar weasel felt like it could have been a toy. I mean, I feel like I could have been and shooting Nerf That's due to the suppressor. Rounds. If I took the suppressor off and you shot it without the suppressor, you're going to notice there's more recoil. Oh, okay. It's also okay. subsonic ammo, so it's not going to feel not as like, much uh, yeah. velocity. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, man. I mean, that's all stuff that I was curious about, and hopefully our listeners uh, enjoy that information as well. But Absolutely. Moving on to the next firearm. Yeah, what else did we shoot? That little gem of a thing you got. It <laughs> barely <laughs> classifies as a firearm. Barely. But it is. Mm-hmm. This one is the Altor pistol. It's a little shingle, single shot, nine millimeter pistol. I bought it because I thought, hey, uh, this is kind of unique and goofy, mm-hmm. and it's really affordable. Why not? Kind of reminds me of the Thunderstruck in some ways. You know, and like a is, novelty firearm, so to speak. We should we should shoot the Thunderstruck. We should. We should. Good. I I mean, I shot this one. Mm. I let's just show what it was. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and uh, roll we, uh, that good yeah. footage. Here we go. This is Logan Judge reporting for the Gun Shop Show. We're shooting the Altor single shot nine millimeter pistol here. This one's kind of wild. Watch how you load this. So we're gonna take the barrel off first. Get my nine millimeter round here. I'm gonna stick it in this little spot right here. Just stick it in there. All right, there. Let's, let's get you home. There we go. Oh, there we go. Gotta put the barrel back on. If you can see here, it says top. So that needs to be your oh, top. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put her in there. Turn it like this. You got a safety here. I'm gonna click that off, or we're gonna send her. Gonna send her. Return to send her. Yeah, it took me so long to shoot because of the. Uh, <laughs> of the oh, nice! Oh, look at that! You did look it. at that! So proud of you. The trigger's weird, folks. Let me show you how it works. It is weird. Let's get that round out of there real quick, yeah. like. I guess that's not too quick, but you pull the trigger back until your finger slips off, and as the trigger's flying forward, that's what it strikes the primer and fires around. So it's like, and then it fires it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of cool. So they Kinda say. Weird. I like it. Trevor Smith, <laughs> reporting for the Gun Shop Show. We're shooting the Altor, one and Dunsies, Gunsies, and somehow, there we go. I'm going to load it up here. Get that color commentary. Mm-hmm. Saw Logan do it. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. It's the first time. All right. Here we go, folks. We'll see if I can make it the first time, too. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, yeah, that didn't end. So yeah, well. that did not end how I thought it was going to end. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, I tell you what, that was a tough one to walk away from. Yeah. And that smoke could be seen from like Springfield. It yeah, was, uh, at least. Crazy. Mm-hmm. If you're in Carthage, you didn't feel that. What were that, you doing? I know, right? Um, well, thankfully, we were so far from civilization. Mm-hmm. But for those who can't see, uh, I uh, I took my shot of the Altor and apparently uh, it exploded into a pretty glorious explosion. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it was like a- I wasn't there. Apparently, because I'm using the no, words we apparently. survived. We uh, mm-hmm. un un unhazed. Yeah, un- we unharmed. S- we saw it happen. Mm-hmm. We hid in a refrigerator. Yeah, I refrigerator. jumped. Yeah, we had one nearby. Uh, we jumped in. We the landed. Fridge. We rolled out of it. Mm-hmm. We were fine. It, they Luckily, know. They know. Mm-hmm. We're telling them stuff I know, they already I know. know. Anyway, but let's talk here, about that Altor. Here's the gun. Super unique. Now, that also freshens breath, breath, right? It does. It does. Actually, it does a lot of things. It kind of looks like a hot glue gun. It does look like a hot glue gun. Maybe a screwdriver. No, it does look like a screwdriver. Maybe, <laughs> maybe something you find in your toolbox. Mm-hmm. But... Um, are they reasonably reasonably affordable? We're looking about one hundred twenty nine, one hundred nineteen dollars somewhere around there. Now, we have them for sale for one hundred twenty nine ninety five, I, I believe. Yeah. Yes. So they're reasonably affordable. You they can, are super affordable, and I would say it's definitely something that you would want if if 
you wanted to conceal what that was Mm -hmm. straight out of the gate. Also put it in a place that, you know, uh, you wouldn't put a a normal gun. That's just how I feel about it. No, I I agree with you. I think I wouldn't buy this gun thinking that I'm going to use it for self-defense and carry it every day. Mm -hmm. I would buy this gun. I would throw it in the back of my pickup, throw it in my glove box, Mm -hmm. throw it in my toolbox, somewhere that it's going to be my last resort option. Uh, You only get one round, so... It's more of a backup than anything, honestly. Yeah, and it's kind of unique and cool. This, it, this, it is. this is a firearm, and it's different than most of what you'll find out there. Yeah, um, I kind of like the fact that it just uses um, the trigger release as the mm-hmm. uh, as the firing mechanism. I wonder if you can see that. Oh, uh, hang on here. Let me pull it up here. Yeah. Okay, you can see that. Yeah. So that's the firing pin. Back yeah, up just a, a little bit. There's the firing pin right there. Yeah. And so, then as you okay. do, here, let me take it off safety. As you depress the trigger, firing pin goes back into the body. And uh, goes bang, folks. And then bam, there it is. Yeah. So uh, cool little pistol, but I'd say for the dollars you're going to spend on that, I'd rather have the barkeep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would I, agree. The barkeep, I, I don't agree. think was much more expensive than that. But no, you're looking at about uh, around 160. Yeah, at least you're going to get happened. five more shots, and um, and it if, may not be the biggest bullets, no, but if still we're, five more shots. Yeah, if we're being if we're, if we're being honest, mm-hmm. and I like to be honest. Yeah, you're an honest man. I am. Uh, this not really fun to shoot. It's yeah. it's really lightweight. The barrel's heavy. Uh, but when you shoot it, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of recoil felt in your hand, a lot of hand shock. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't shoot 20 rounds at the range. I've shot this probably 10 to 15 times in a row, and it does hurt your hand. Yeah. Uh, I actually bought two of these. This one's 9 millimeter, but the other one I have, which looks identical. The 380? Is in 380. It's much, much, much more pleasant to shoot. Yeah. Well, we have one more here. Yes, the uh, last one that we shot. Yeah. Here we go. I didn't, I didn't shoot this one. Yeah. This is, more, this is one of mine. Yeah. This is Trevor Smith reporting for the Gun Shop Show, and today we'll be firing the Weather Station automatic two-person double fiberglass umbrella. Wow. Just in the nick of time, folks. Works like a charm. Yeah, it was in the nick of time because it started coming it does down work pretty like a heavy. Charm. Yeah, I mean, it did exactly what it was designed to, to do. Yeah, first fire, boom, it went up. Yeah. It canopied right as it was almost mm-hmm. as if the if it was intuitive like it knew it it was like it knew it, it was almost like it was automatic or something mm-hmm. it was kind of crazy yeah now, i didn't i didn't get to fire right that mm-hmm. but you did get to brand but it. i did i did brandish it i did mm-hmm. hold it um mm-hmm. i do have some cons yeah what are your I, cons I, I don't know if i should tell you because it's, that's fine it's, dude. you're it's, not gonna hurt your, my feelings you bought that today you know i don't yeah you're not gonna hurt my feelings <laughs> it, it was a little heavy after a while i was like and maybe that's just me Maybe I just need to work on myself and get stronger. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's cool, bro. Keep you, going. I'm sure? not. Yeah, I'm not. It mad. was heavy, so after a while, I just. You look mad. I'm not mad. Oh, okay, I'm totally cool. happy. After a while, just I was like, my arm, my arm's kind of sore. Maybe that's because a few days ago, earlier this week, I was dunking on people. But yeah, yeah you were dunking. That's mm-hmm. what I do. Mm-hmm. It's just true. Um, but we should let folks know also mm-hmm. that. You have basically the strength of a three-year-old. Two three-year-olds. Mm-hmm. Two three. <laughs> Two three-year-olds. So that's basically a six-year-old. Uh, oh, you kind know? of. But even a six-year-old is going to be like, this one is heavy. But you hang in there, champ. You hang in there, and you be strong. I'll be strong You'll come you. around. You'll come around. Now, I did like how much coverage it had. Yeah, it had Great. ample coverage. Fantastic also, coverage. Also, doubles mm. as a parasol. Mm-hmm. It's that big. Yeah. Well, it's also a feature of it. I don't know that I read off all the features, but oh, it, it, it doubles that? as a parasol. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Well, okay. So we, I think we hit all of the numbers, mm-hmm. which by the way, in our last break, yep. I went ahead and picked up some of uh, our friend Paul Glasgow of Legally Armed America's yep. um, hot sauce. The oh, pl- did you? Yeah, the you butter sauce. Some? I went ahead and I I'm liter- excited to try. literally ordered some. So when it comes in, we'll all give it a shot. Sweet. And we'll do a little review on it, round table review of that. Oh my gosh. I feel what, like this could catch on. Do you know what we, yeah. Maybe you know what we didn't do? What did we not do? We did a round table review uh-huh. style, uh-huh. whatever you want to call yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And we didn't once ask Eli how he felt about it. Well, let's get him to fill in now. Yeah. Okay. Let's so, throw, uh, let's throw um, him to Eli. Yeah. Um, uh, he's been really do, quiet on this show. I don't know yeah. why, but. You feeling okay, man? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the sugar weasel with the thunder chicken. 
What'd you think? For it. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you didn't have to say that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I understand why he hasn't been talking this entire time. Yeah, I don't if know. He's maybe gonna he's say, a if he's sick. gonna say stuff like that, yeah, well, not good. I mean, not good. At least he didn't bring your mom into it this time. I think he wanted to. It felt <laughs> Bro, like he wanted. He to. was on the cusp. He's always on the cusp. But I tell you what, when it got, yeah. I mean, he's dude. Yeah. My mom. Oh man, he has. Honestly, I don't know how we've stayed friends all this time. Really, mm-hmm. man. It's every mm-hmm. conversation. It's your mom. Mm-hmm. Your mom. Mm-hmm. Your mom. Mm-hmm. Your mom. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. even if it doesn't relate to it. Yeah. I'm like, hey, man, you want a drink of water? He's like, your mm-hmm. mom. And I'm like, yeah. You're like mayo or mustard? He's like, your mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you so. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, you want chips or fries? Uh, and uh, wait, I'm like, you want <laughs> chips or fries? Yeah. And he's like, uh, your mom. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, God, man gets me every time and i was like that. hey man how's your day been going good morning he's like your mom <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm actually like, really unprofessional it, it's weird uh <laughs> it's weird oh man he's i'm like hey man it. so i got all my work done for the day mm-hmm. what else do you want me to do and he's like your mom whoa I'm like, whoa. whoa 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 and uh you're like not wait a second wait a second there are zero cousins here <laughs> <laughs> i'm like and i'm not drunk <laughs> Oh, that's inside stuff. That's inside baseball. I don't think anyone baseball. knows about that. No, and, uh, we, no you one, shouldn't tell it. No one needs to know But I bet that. you probably left a lot on the table there to be assumed. Yeah. We're just going to let the people assume. This is your past. They'll have no this idea. This is your past. So, yeah. you know what, dude? What's I feel up? like What's we should up, tell bro? people that, uh, I don't know how long it's been, maybe going on a week or so, we went mm-hmm. to the Blue Room in Springfield, and we yes, saw we our friend. He doesn't know he's well. He doesn't know he's. He my doesn't friend know yet. that we're friends. But yeah, both I, we are. I we're ba- you, we were separated at birth. This guy mm-hmm. just doesn't know it yet, mm-hmm. right? I mean, he's got black hair. I've got blonde. It doesn't matter. All right, yeah. they're both we're, guys. We're basically that's, that's something. That's yeah. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, we're pretty much just Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito from the movie Twins. If you ever seen that. We're twin Accurate. brothers, but we don't look anything alike. Accurate. So anyway, we went and saw um, Dusty Slay. Mm-hmm. He's a stand-up comedian at the Blue Room in Springfield. Yep. And I have to say, I've been to two stand-up comedy shows in my mm-hmm. life. All right. The first one was uh, quite amateur, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of comedians getting started up. So, you know, some of it was funny. Uh, a little bit of it was funny. Some of it was a little rough around the edges. And yeah. I like to think of myself as a student of comedy. I, mm-hmm. I watch a lot of it and a lot of behind the scenes and try to get an idea like how it works, you know, just because I enjoy that part of things. And we te- know what you're trying to do. I'm technical about it. You're trying to become funny. Trying to, trying to, bro. I'm 41, man. You think, you think I haven't mastered it by now? Okay, I'm not that far. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, uh, this is the first. I would say he's a professional comedian. Yep. He's been on uh, the Late Show, the Late Shows. Uh, mm-hmm. Jimmy, what's that guy's name? Jimmy They're all Fallon? Jimmy something. Yeah, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Stewart. Who's no, Jimmy Stewart? Jimmy Stewart. James Stewart. James something like that. Stewart. He's a he? by, of a bygone era. I don't think he was a TV person. Uh, okay. But you might I, be I thinking of the is. original. Um, the original. Gosh damn. I just know the name. Yeah. Okay. So the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson is who I was thinking of, which oh, is not okay. a Jimmy. But anyway, he's been on Jimmy Fallon. He's been on uh, what's the other guy on? ABC, who's not really that funny, he used to be on the Man Show. You know what I'm Stephen talking about? Stephen Colbert? No, he's a CBS. I don't think he's been on that. So who else is on the ABC? Man? Wait, late? No, no, no. no. Oh, oh, um, Jimmy Kimmel. Yes. Okay. So I was right. There is more than one Jimmy. There's a lot of Jimmy. All right. So uh, he's been on Jimmy Kimmel. He's been on that. He was on uh, Last Comic Standing years mm-hmm. ago. Anyway, I'm just giving you all these credentials away so you know that he's actually a professional comedian, not yeah. just some guy who I'm saying is professional. Mm-hmm. Super hilarious. I highly recommend checking out his comedy. Um, but uh, anyway, it was a good time. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was a little bit of a, of a culture shock for me. I know I already told you about this, mm-hmm. but walking into that place, and you know they're all wearing masks and it's all trying to be covid as uh, a covid friendly, friendly which, yeah which by the way covid uh, friendly is that did not yeah i guess mm-hmm. friendly to covid yeah right, no but yeah, uh, I don't know. anyway it it was a farce in regards to that with with regards to the covid stuff but anyway they were mm-hmm. trying to be that way yeah. so you know they you'd come in and they'd lead you to a table Mm-hmm. felt very uh uh what do you call that like cadillac you know where you're just kind of like being led through this chamber of of uh not chamber but uh do you know what i'm talking about 
you know what they do like with cattle when they try to hurt no, them in yeah, places? No, I know. I've done them before. So yeah, kind of like that in a way. That's what it felt like to me. All right. So like I didn't know what was going on. My friends were left behind me, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, they had to put bracelets on our arms. Yeah. So we kind of got separated a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So Not that the place was big, but. Then we didn't even get to sit together, which was oh, not man, something that, that I broke, wanted. Yeah, that kind of broke my heart. Yeah. So uh, uh, it was myself, uh, my lady, Logan, his lady, and Eli and uh, Vanessa. Mm-hmm. We all went together. Uh, and we all enjoy Dusty Slay, at least the three of us do. And so he was in town, and we decided mm-hmm. to go see him. So Dusty Slay, I know that, I know this may seem odd, but we're pretty much best friends. I just need you, I need you to call me. All right. I need you to call me because I want to get him on the gun shop show. Mm-hmm. I want him on the gun shop show. I believe he's from Nashville and uh, grew up on, uh, I want to say he grew up on a farm or something. So he's definitely had to have fired some guns. So it's gun related. Yeah. I guess we can find out if we yeah. can get him on. Yeah. So I've been, uh, I've sent him messages on Twitter. You've been trying to court him. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Dude, full court, yeah. not half court. This is full court action right now. It's either right? full court or no court. We're uh-huh. being honest with you. Yeah. It's four courts. Mm-hmm. Uh, at full court. Uh, but yeah, so I've uh, sent him messages through Twitter. Mm-hmm. I've sent him messages through Facebook. I've sent him messages through Instagram. I've commented on several of his videos on YouTube. I've commented on his posts on Facebook and I've sent him emails. He responded and said that he would come on the gun shop show mm-hmm. to one of my emails. Now, when we were there, I met him. I spoke to him and asked him. You guys if, got a pick, right? Too. Yeah, we got a picture. I should show that evidence. proof. Um, evidence yeah, proof. that way. Yeah. That way, you know that I'm now, not lying. Yeah, go ahead. Now, do you think you're coming on uh, just a little too strong? There is that possibility, but what it comes down to is uh, you got to be, I got to get noticed, right? I can't just be some guy who is... uh, just that makes one comment, yeah, hope he like, sees it. Right. Yeah. You know, he needs to see my name places. He needs to know that I exist and that I'm not just some floozy who's trying to get a one night uh, show stand if, with him. If and, there's one thing Trevor Smith is not, it's a floozy. Uh huh. Yeah. That definitely, uh, definitely not a floozy. I'm trying, okay. I'm trying to find this. I don't want to show it yet. So. Uh, yeah, you, while you find that, I can so, talk about my experience at the Blue Room. I had here we never... Are. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There you guys are. That's me and my future uh, best friend. And Dusty Slay. My future best friend, Dusty Slay. Uh-huh. And he, he did just... Uh, mm-hmm. He doesn't know it yet, but there he's a is. handsome looking fella. I'll tell you what, I like his glasses. Yeah. All right? Yeah. I love those glasses. I want some of those glasses, but right now I'm rocking that uh, former military look. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that also... He, the hat he chooses or the hats he chooses are the kinds of hats that I would choose. I would choose those hats. We got, man, we're basically, like I told you, we're basically two embryos that were split between uh, parents, probably like mm, solid six gens back. Uh, Six Mm -hmm. gens. Yep. Six gens. I get it. And so I can talk about my experience. Yeah. How did you feel about it, man? Uh, I had never been to a comedy show before. Actually, I scratched that. I went to a hypnotist that was kind of a comedian. Okay. Like, I, he hypnotized you to make you pull your pants down on something? Well, not me, but some <laughs> some of my friends would probably know. I bet clothes came off. But, no, actually. Oh, um, okay. It was, it was weird PG, because... PG, It didn't feel like he thought that hypnotism could be standalone on its own thing. It mm-hmm. had to be hypnotism and comedy. It right. couldn't just be hypnotism. Right. It couldn't just be like, hey quit yeah. that bad habit. It's like, hey, pick your nose and right. pick your boogers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like, hey, spin around and talk like a monkey. <laughs> Is that Funny. really something that you did? I, I didn't do it. I oh. watched. I, I oh, had okay. a friend. Um, So he called a bunch of people to the stage and uh-huh. he, he told some people to go sit back down. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's because they weren't susceptible to hypnotism. Right. Not that I believe in it. I don't really, I don't know if I believe in hypnotism or not. If, if you yeah. do, let us know in the comments. Yeah. I mean, or it, don't. there's probably people who have have been mm-hmm. now it's just you get to a certain state where you're super suggestive if i remember correctly I it's think not so. that you're actually like under someone else's you control. know what he did make people take their clothes off did he yep see i had forgotten uh years ago like mm, 2000 i believe it was i went to central missouri state for about a year and they yep. had a uh someone like that that was a comedian slash hypnotist and mm-hmm. uh, we all came into this big gymnasium and sat there and they tried to like put people in the audience into a hypno uh, hypnotic notic state. Yeah. And then those people who were like under hypnosis would come up on stage. And if I'm being honest with you, 
I completely checked out. Like that's all I remember from the entire thing. I, I just, it wasn't for me, but it was similar to what you're talking about. It was, you know, entertaining and, yeah. and he wanted to know what people were, you know, what they wanted to quit if they wanted to quit smoking mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And, you know, and did that whole, uh, uh, trope, if you will, of, of, um, hypnotism. Mm-hmm. But you know, what's even crazier and that's going to come full circle to the dusty sleigh thing. What is it? Jimmy Fallon came that year before he got, uh, he was still doing really? SNL. Yeah. He came to the campus. Uh, I have pictures of him. That's I, cool. The irony is, is, uh, I didn't actually go see the guy. I was like, <laughs> I don't care about Jimmy Fallon. And now like, look, he's kind of a big, big well, fan. yeah. I mean, I guess it depends I say on kind of, I, he matters to people who want to matter to other people. Yeah. So if you want to yeah. be uh, seen or you want to be heard getting on Jimmy Fallon show mm-hmm. the way to be. So, I mean, he does, uh, he carries a big stick. I mean, I like some of his comedy. Yeah, I, I just, do too. I do too. But I'm just saying you know. famous people, I don't, it's not, not again, anything against famous people, but you're just another person to me. All right. You're just any other person. And so when I talk to you, Dusty Slay, this isn't some psycho fan out there trying to, you know, get clothes, get pieces of your clothes or pieces of your hair or something. You know, I just want to be, I just want to be your best friend. I just want to be your best friend. I just want to be your best friend. I just want to be super best friend. I just want to go for car rides with you, man. I just, want to go for, I just want to go for walks on the beach with you, man. <laughs> and, then wow. it gets, and then it gets creepy. Yeah, this is what, kind of this stuff. is what happens when it's just you and me, man. It's what happens. It gets it's, weird. And it's mostly this me, episode has been so much different than any of our. It's other, been other really, episodes. honestly, and really tame. I don't know if it's, that's good or not. Why? I don't know. Well, I think it's been fine. I don't know. I've had a super time, man. I've had a good time going and shooting guns. It was fun. And talking Dude, guns. It's been so long since we shot guns. We even went, we, do, we had to suffer through all the rain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we guns. were like, I don't care. Rain, sleet, snow. Uh, your mom, I'm going shooting guns. Whoa, dude. And then we Did went you bring up my guns. mom again? No. I didn't say anything about moms. I thought I heard. We don't do that on I this. It's a family friendly mom. show. I thought I heard it's okay. It's so a family yeah. friendly. So your dad. Okay, that's better. Okay. That's better. Bring, that's your fine. sister, your brother, uh, like okay. bringing them all in, uh, okay. you know, big family. Oh, here. yeah, of course. We try to keep it family friendly here. On the gun show. You know, show. we never talked about my experience at Blue Room. You were starting to, and then I think I interrupted you. You because did, I'm, because I'm you wanted to. I'm a big jerk. Falling all over Dusty Slay. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about hypnotism. That was the first time you went to a Oh, a yeah, show. and then you got into your hypnotism. I totally yeah. forgot. Sorry, I totally man. Forgot. Sorry, so, man. yeah. Yeah. So, um, he, had a bu- he called a bunch of people up there, mm-hmm. and uh, I had a couple of friends up that were called up there as well. I didn't really want to do it because I was like... I don't believe any of this bogus stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, I didn't go up there, but uh, they had the hypnotist would be like, it's really hot in here. And then the people would take their clothes off and they'd be like, but, but not, but, but not naked, not naked. No, he had to, you know, differentiate, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. which I was like, you probably shouldn't be doing this if you have to tell people not to <laughs> right? get naked. Yeah, like you don't want an accidental right? uh, nip slip or uh-huh, something. Exactly. This ain't the Super Bowl. And then he was like, it's really cold in here and everyone bundled back up. But, after the show, mm-hmm. I talked to my friend and I was like, hey, man, is any of that real? And he was like, no, <laughs> I just didn't want to make him look bad oh, when he was nice. telling us to do stuff. Nice. So I just did everything. He did said. he make any money off of acting that way? No. Oh, that sucks. No. So it was it's pretty much the power of suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if I believe it or not. I, I have a hard time buying it. It's not to say that it couldn't happen. Yeah. I just would say it's a high problem. It's like ghosts. Like mm-hmm. if you believe that ghosts are, exist or you've seen a ghost and we're going to come back to your blue room experience, I promise. Um, if you do, or you've seen something, mm-hmm. it, I, no judgment is being passed here. Okay. Like I, I've done, I've seen things that I thought were ghosts, but I also know that I have a pretty wild imagination. Yeah. So anything true, that I've had, I've seen in the past and I, I've seen and experienced things that would make my skin crawl if I thought about mm-hmm. it too much, but I don't believe that that exists mostly due to the fact that there is absolutely zero evidence mm-hmm. of hauntings. And if there was, don't you think those shows that are like going into these homes mm-hmm. would capture something something like they don't walk out of there with anything you know they might have some crackly sound in a recording where it's like i think uh i think their their uh, defense would be like go to a certain marker and you'll hear like 
But yeah, that was a ghost. Yeah, and See, you're like, are you sure it wasn't just another one of your team just doing that to or scare just people? A, a, any, it could be anything. I mean, I'm not saying that it's it, it not could. impossible. There's been times when I've woken up in the middle, uh, the middle of the night at my house, mm-hmm. and heard a noise, mm-hmm. and been like, "What's going on in my house? Is it haunted?" Mm-hmm. And I get up, mm-hmm. and it's just my cat playing with like a plastic bag or something. Mm-hmm. It, it's always explainable. Yeah. And I mean, the same thing with me. I, I one time I, I used to live in these apartments. It was mm-hmm. a, tri- it was called, it was a triplex apartments and I was in the living room and you, from where I sat, you could see down this little hallway and it was a real shallow hallway, yeah. you know, before it took a left and went uh, towards the bathroom. And then my room was off of that turn and there was another door that was really hard to explain mm-hmm. this whole setup. But anyway, there was a light uh, uh, overhead that was just outside of the corner, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting there and I look over and I see what is a complete human silhouette walk by. I'm the only one home. It's terrifying. Right. So it freaks me out. Like I'm literally, I'm in my early twenties. Not that Mm. that really matters. That's how long ago it was. Uh, freaks me out. I call up a friend and I'm like, look, I'm cause I won't talk about it while I'm there. Cause I don't want them to know. I know, you know? Right. Like, I can't have the ghosts know. And I know <laughs> that they're hate that they're there. Cause then they'll come and pass. Yeah. If they don't know that right? they're safe. Right. So I call up a friend and I'm like, uh, when you get off, I need you to come get me. And they're like, what's wrong? I was like, I don't want to tell you I'm fine, but I need you to come get me. <laughs> so oh they God. came, they came and got me. It was like probably five uh-huh. or six o'clock in the uh-huh. morning by the time they got off. And then I was, I went over and slept at their house. That's how freaked out I was. Okay. So if I, if I'm making, seems like I'm making fun of ghosts and people who believe in ghosts, I've experienced things that freaked me out, but as I've gotten older and the more I've realized that your brain can play amazing tricks on you, especially at night when it's dark. Yeah. And when you're, if you're sleep deprived, Mm -hmm. even a little bit, but not only that, like all these TV shows and all this camera equipment that's out there, there is nothing that's irrefutable evidence. And you could show me whatever you want. I'm still going to have a hard time buying it because of the fact that of millions, probably billions of hours of footage, Mm -hmm it would be difficult to come up with substantial amounts of evidence of apparition, apparitions, Mm -hmm. apparitions, apparitions. I think that's what apparitions. It's apparitions. Believe, so, yeah. I'll have to look it up now. But anyway, sorry, we I got deviated again from your experience. It, of, it always happens. It um, always happens. Yeah. But back to my blue room story. <laughs> Apparition. Yeah. So it's the first time I've been to a comedy club uh, mm-hmm. like that. An actual uh, an actual stand up comedian watching that and whatnot. So yeah. um, the room was a little jarring. It was it was a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. And uh, we sat down and they separated us. And I was like. That kind of sucks. I thought we were all going to sit together, but they're trying to be COVID friendly and and whatnot. So I understand. But my biggest issue is that they serve food there. Yeah. And the lady came up to me and I had the menu in my hand (laughs) like this. And I was like, how is this? This thing right here, and I was—it was like I don't know some kind of taco. I was like, "How are these tacos?" And she's like, "Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, they're really good. They're really good." And I was like, oh, "Okay, cool, cool, cool." How are these tacos? And she's like, "Mm-hmm, those are really good too. I really like those." And I was like, "Awesome, awesome." What about this this pork bacon wrapped pork or whatever? She was like, "That's that's good too. That's really good too." And I was like, "Okay, uh, I think I'm ready to order. I want I want some fries, a couple of these tacos." And uh, that's pretty much it. And she was like, "Okay, okay." So let me get this straight. And she listed off everything I had her. I had her explain to me. Mm-hmm. So I was just asking questions. I was like, "How are these tacos?" Put it on my tab. <laughs> How are these tacos? She put it on my tab. So she's like listing. She's like reading off this like huge script mm-hmm. of stuff that I had ordered. And I was like, "Hold the phone." I don't want half that stuff. Mm-hmm. I want this, this, and this, and this. And I still ended up spending way too much. But yeah. She wrote down everything I asked her about. Yeah, uh, that kind of sucks, That's man. What I, I mean, to be fair, the tacos were decent. They were good. There, I didn't, I didn't regret anything that I actually purchased, but. That's how they get you. Yeah, it's that's how they get, they get you. you. That that's is how they, how they get, get, you. get you. The tickets were really affordable too. I think uh, they're they about were twenty five. I spent piece. more money on the food than I did than we did the tickets. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. I mean, per person. I per mean, person. Well, okay, I take that back because between me and my lady, mm. uh, we spent about thirty dollars. That's with tip on food. <sighs> between me, I think we spent fifty. Yeah. Well, you did basically get we a ordered of everything, well, the, and you a, got well. You had alcohol table, too. Like the t- yeah, the table is like this big. Mm-hmm. I don't. 
Well, you I might like, want to go the other way. It was probably like about uh, less than a two foot, about two foot, about maybe? two foot, probably two foot circle. Mm-hmm. And over half of it was my stuff that I ordered. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh-huh. every dish was in its own box in its own container. Yeah. That yep. was a bit jarring. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it's just to keep everything cleaner and mm-hmm. plates are a little bigger. Yeah. Um, but they were, they brought Trevor's food down there. Like we made sure to box it up and mm-hmm. box up a de- bunch of items in one box. So we don't, you know, fill up all the table because I had taken up most of it, but it really wasn't. I mean, maybe they put my ladies two no. sliders in one box, but I had two tacos. It's not like if one taco per box was happening. Right. I had three tacos. Sorry. Right. And then we got the fries good. too. I had a good time. But, yeah, um, I did too. I think, it was kind of like great for a first experience. It was. Uh, next time I go back, I'm going to be better suited to, and right. you better believe it, Dusty Slay. I'm going to come see you again. I'm coming to Nashville. I'm coming to Nashville. The thing that I thought was weird is after Dusty Slay performed, and he was hilarious, oh, and it was awesome. I heard about this. Yeah, like we get up to leave, you know. I take off because, like a bat out of, a, yeah, of a, a hell. Because he, he he was the show. That's the reason he came to the show. Yeah. He's done. The He's show the is over. So yeah, exactly. So we're we're getting up. We're collecting our things. We're about to leave. And some, someone comes over the uh, speaker. And they're like, everyone, please please sit back down. Don't close out your tabs. We have more people coming on. We have we have another show on the way. It's it's gonna be great. And we're like. They must have just came up with that at the end because oh, they must, they dude, must the thing of it is, is like we're sitting there, right? And I mean, we'd been sitting there listening to Dusty uh, tell jokes for a while. I mean, it was probably about a 45 minute set. Yeah, the, the whole show was probably what, two hours? Yeah, I mean, it was it. his was the, definitely the significant portion. Uh-huh. But it was. It we're was. probably closing in on five to 10 minutes out from the mm-hmm. end of his set. And they come around and they take payment from us. Yep. You know, you so don't want us to close out our, bi- our tab. Mm-hmm. Don't come collect payment from us. Make right? us come find you. That's how you mm-hmm. handle that. Also, don't have your MC tell people good night and then come back on. I, that's why I kind of think maybe yeah. it was like a last second. I don't thing. know how many people stayed after Dusty Slay. Yeah. But whoever was on next was performing for like maybe a tenth to a twentieth of the audience. Mm. Oh, it yeah. It must. Well, the, hey, bud, those it are must the have trenches. Been rough. Those are the trenches. So rough. You're playing to what is seemingly an empty room. You got to build that following mm. one laugh or one person at a time, man. It's it's a tough road. I've tried it, not with comedy. I tried it with music. I yep. played for a lot of empty rooms. I played for handfuls of people. It's not the best, but I will tell you this. If you actually do find success, it totally makes it worth it. Yeah. You're not going to find better gratification than when you've made it. And I, I, something else about that is, and it kind of goes a little under the radar, is like a lot of musicians who kind of went through all of that, or even comedians for that matter, I think a lot of them stay humble. And the reason that is, is because they saw that no one yeah they've been through that yeah it's not everybody is a breakout star i feel like you're less likely to appreciate the hard work Mm -hmm. i mean it's like any great master craftsman right you you go through all of the hardship of Mm -hmm. uh you put in all your blood sweat and tears yeah and then eventually you make your way you get great you get Mm -hmm. better people start noticing your work and you start actually making money off of it and it becomes your livelihood and then now you've made it but you've seen so much along the way that it's really hard to take it for granted yeah i think a lot of people are just normal people fail to realize that they they look at dusty say and they're like oh my gosh i wish i could just tell jokes and Mm -hmm. get paid for it but he worked his ass off to get there and a lot of people just see where he's at now and go must always been like this i'm funny enough to do that but you're not willing to put in all the work it takes to get there because i'm sure and he's kind of he kind of touched on it during his show that he's played for audiences where there's nobody right he's playing to one person or two people yeah so he's he's put in the effort He's paid his dues. He's made it, and I'm I'm proud of him for doing that. Every bit of what I would consider having made it would be where he's at, and uh, I I don't know. It'd be cool. I'm looking forward to being best friends with a stand-up comedian and write, helping him write some hey jokes. Hey, man, I'm a stand-up comedian. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to help him write some jokes. <laughs> Gloss over that. <laughs> so uh, I think we kind of covered everything that uh, we had on the slate today. I was and I can't really just take my shoes off like Eli does. Why not? They're just fancier. Oh, because you can't pop them off? No, I can't. Are you going to... Are you about to do this? Yeah, man. I'll be that guy. Oh, my gosh. I got some shoes over here on the floor, man. Oh, sweet. I keep pair of spare shoes with me. Airwear. Hey, let's see. Airwear. Let's see them. Yeah. Uh, let's well, close I'm this. not... 
I'm not going to. Oh. But what I am going to do. Yep. What you going to do? I'm going to do a little bit of this. What you going to do with all the. Oh, snap. There's the shoe. Do you know what that is? That right there, that is an Asics. And I use that for my working out. They make good shoes. I do. Asics. I used to wear them back when I wrestled. Brooks guy myself. Oh, Brooks. Oh, Brooks and Dunn. Uh, Thanks for joining us on the Gun Shop Show. Yay! Wow, that was that was something. Yeah, we something. we did a fifty minutes in the show drive. I don't leave this up until the very very last second. So you just gotta keep talking about stuff. Talking, talking, talking. I uh, checking to see if I have any stuff. I literally have tweeted to Dusty three separate times. He retweeted my tweet. By the way. He retweeted, assuming that it was him. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, sure was. I like French fry potatoes. Mm-hmm.